I used to live in a three-story house with my parents, younger sibling, and our dog. We moved into this house a few months before my younger sibling was born, and that was when we first met our neighbors across the street. Lucas, who was the oldest child in their family, was always a bit strange, but there were some aspects of his personality that were more than just strange. They were straight up disturbing. It would take hours to cover everything, so I'm just going to get straight to the point. I'm almost positive Lucas has been inside our house in the middle of the night. Our house was built on a hill, so it looked like it was only two stories from the front, and the basement was connected to the backyard. The yards in this neighborhood were much larger than they are in the new housing developments, so it would have been very easy for someone to enter the backyard unnoticed. Despite this, my family was terrible about making sure the basement doors were locked. My younger siblings and I would always go in and out when we were playing in the backyard. Or someone would let the dog out and we would end up forgetting to lock one of the doors before bed. We also lived in a safe area where it was more common for people to leave the doors unlocked. However, my family did always lock the door leading down to the basement every night, along with all the other doors on the main level of the house. I had a fucked up sleep schedule back then, so I'd usually still be awake at 3 or 4 in the morning. There are two specific incidents that happened very late at night, which makes me think that Lucas has been inside our house without our knowledge. One night, I was in my bedroom in the upper level of the house. It was probably around 2.30 in the morning. I suddenly heard the sound of an angry growl coming from downstairs. Thinking that my dog spotted a cat in the front yard, I quickly rushed downstairs to stop him from barking and waking up my entire family. This kind of thing would happen every now and then, so I wasn't thinking too much of it at the time. But instead of going downstairs and finding my dog in the front window, I found him by the locked door that leads down to the basement. The fur on his back of his neck was standing up and his nose was pressed to the bottom of the door. I instantly froze when I realized what was happening. There is something or someone on the other side of that basement door. I was barely a teenager at the time, so I began to panic and started making my way up the stairs as quietly as possible. I woke up both of my parents, but neither of them took me very seriously. My dad just assumed that the dog was hearing random noises coming from outside, but he did eventually go down to check things out. He said that everything downstairs looked normal, but he also mentioned that we forgot to lock one of the basement doors that night. Then there was another time that I was up late at night in my room. But this time, instead of hearing my dog growling, I heard a loud bark that echoed through the entire house. The sound was sudden and intense, similar to a gunshot. It almost made me jump out of my chair. Assuming again that the dog had seen a cat outside, I quickly looked out of my bedroom window and tried to spot whatever he was barking at. My heart suddenly dropped when, instead of seeing a cat, I saw Lucas running out of her front yard in the pitch black. I watched him cross the street and go back towards his own house before I rushed to close the curtains and duck out of sight. I remember sitting there struggling to process what I had just seen and questioning why Lucas would be in our yard in the middle of the night. I told my mom about it the very next morning and she said that she would bring it up to Lucas's mom. Because of these two instances, and because of other details I can't include, I'm 99% sure that Lucas had been inside of our house in the middle of the night. If you knew the entire story behind this family, then you'd also find the thought of this to be extremely disturbing. I do want to mention that this happened years ago. My family no longer lives in that house, and the neighbors across the street are doing fine. But looking back on everything now, I'm realizing how creepy that situation truly was. I'm a 24 year old male. Almost a year ago, I was fresh out of college and just moved into an apartment with my middle school bestie, 23 female, and her fiance, 25 male. This was after a long period of not seeing her in person. My bestie and I had a long and great relationship with few rocky periods. I didn't know her fiance well, but I had met him a couple times. He came off as kind of rude and loud, but mostly nice enough. I let a lot of the little annoying behaviors slide, B 
because she was so in love with him. I really just wanted to spend time with my best friend. Over the course of a few months, I slowly discovered that she was trapped in an abusive relationship with the most classic example of a malignant narcissist imaginable. Their fights, really just him raging at her while she cried, escalated to the point where he was completely trashing the apartment, breaking her phone and laptop, hiding her car keys, blocking the door, and grabbing her arm so hard she had bruises, all while hurling out the worst insults he could fathom at the top of his lungs for hours. This man is about a foot taller and 100 pounds heavier than me, so there was nothing I could really do other than give her a ride somewhere else, away from him until the next day. He didn't like it when I did that. Once it reached the point of physical harm against her, I put my foot down and demanded that he move out or that I would call the cops. He wasn't technically signed to the lease, so I could have him kicked out. He begged me for time to find a new place. He was extremely drunk and high the night he heard her and promised to stay sober until he moved out. Not wanting to escalate things, I agreed on the condition that nothing like that would ever happen again. My friend and her fiancé broke up soon after that. Three weeks pass and everything's going great. Ex-fiancé has found a new place, is in training for a new job, and while he's still loud and inconsiderate, he hasn't caused any problems so far. I get ready for bed early. I had an important meeting the next morning. I put on some comfy pajamas, locking my door before I changed out of habit. My bestie is out working, and it's just me upstairs in bed, and ex-fiancé is downstairs yelling on the phone about something. I tune him out and try to sleep. He's moving out the next week. My chest rattles from the booming footfalls up the stairs to my room, waking me from sleep. My eyes snap open to see the doorknob rattling back and forth, locked. He lets out a yell of pure malice and bangs on my door. He screams my name and is so slurred he sounds like he's trying to impersonate a lizard man. The hinges aren't looking so good. We live in a crappy cheap apartment with thin doors. I have to do something before he breaks open the door. I say the only thing I can think of. What the fuck? Suddenly the banging and screaming stops. My doorknob falls still. After a terrifying moment of silence, he says flatly, Open the door, bud. Just come and open the door. I still laugh about that one. Like after all that, I'll just walk over and open the door. Instead, I just grabbed my essentials and jumped out the window. I was on the second floor, but we lived on a hill, so the fall wasn't quite so high. Still, managed to fall wrong. I hobbled quickly as I could to my car and peeled away. I called my best friend and warned her not to go home. We made plans for her to stay with a friend after she got off work. I made it to the friend's house and passed out for a few hours. I woke up from a call from my bestie. He traveled all the way to her workplace with a knife and broke in. He assaulted her and held a knife up to her special needs client's throat and said that he would kill him right in front of her. Thank God a co-worker overheard everything in another room and was able to call the police in time for everyone to come out alive. My bestie also said that he was on the phone with her while he was banging on my door and he said he was going to kill me and make her listen. I was totally alone in the apartment with him, sleeping upstairs in my bed. If I hadn't locked my door that night, would I even still be alive? If I had had my car keys downstairs, would I have been able to get away? When I returned to my apartment the next morning, my bedroom door was completely kicked in. My belongings were scattered everywhere, and the large butcher knives were missing from the kitchen, instead sitting in the corner of the hallway to my room. I'm a 20 year old female. I recently moved into a new apartment with my boyfriend who works away for long periods of time. An older man 50 started becoming friendly with me knowing that I was new in the complex. I made the mistake of telling him I live with my partner but he's away for work all the time. Almost every day after that he'd come knocking on my door and would wait if I didn't answer. He would leave after 5 minutes of knocking with no answer. One time, I was out in the common grass area playing with my little brother that I would occasionally have over. 
I saw him coming my way and I quickly picked up my brother. The man started making conversation, asking about my brother and literally tried to grab him out of my arms. I held onto my brother tight and pulled away. As he started to cry, I made the excuse that I had to go feed him and then walked away. That was the last time I went near that man with my brother. I'm extremely bad with confrontation, as you can tell. A few days later, I heard a knock on my door and opened it without thinking. He walked straight past me into my apartment without even saying a word, just smiling. I asked him if he was doing okay. He said, I'm good. Just wanted to see what your place looked like inside and started walking into every room. He checked all the windows and said, Hmm, all your windows have bars on them, except your bathroom. I nervously laughed and said, Yeah, I guess I do. I didn't know what to do, so I just walked out to the front garden, hoping that he would follow me out of the apartment and try to talk to me. I just wanted him out, but was scared to anger him. I could tell he didn't seem like he was right in the head. Once he came out of the front door, I closed my door and said, I have to go to the shop now. Sorry, it's going to close soon and walked off. That night while hanging my clothes up, another neighbor introduced herself, 34 female. I told her what happened and asked if she knew the man. Apparently he had been doing the same exact thing to her. She told her partner that this creepy neighbor was doing the same thing to a young girl, me, and that was the last straw. He ended up going and talking to the older man. After that, the older man only tried one more time that I know of to knock on my door, which I hid in my kitchen for 10 minutes until he left. I haven't heard anything since and haven't seen him around, but I wake up at night panicking, thinking that he's planning on doing something to me. Edit, since there's too many comments for me to reply to. My windows are glass, so there's no way I can put a lock on it. And I talked to management, and there's nothing that they can do since he stopped now, apparently. I'm thinking of possibly filing a police report, so that it'll at least be on record. I'm a female, 22. I was parked on the side street of my house with my friend, 21 female. I lived next to a dead end road. The road faces two other houses and all my neighbors parked their cars there. My friend didn't want to be rude to my family and block them in, so she parked on the right side of the street so it would be easier for her to drive out and go home. My neighbor has a trailer, the kind you hook up onto the back of your car. My friend lives with her parents and switches to the car that she uses pretty frequently. We were in her dad's old beater Toyota Camry. I didn't get out of the car immediately because I wanted to talk to her for a little bit before I went inside. All of a sudden, my neighbor, which I hadn't yet realized at the time was my neighbor, pulled up right next to our car. He got out of the car and started walking towards our car. I know that we made the wrong decision when this happened, but we were afraid. It was after dark and we're both girls, and he's a heavyset, bald, white man, just to give you a description. So my friend reversed to get out of there. Her intentions were to drive somewhere and wait 10 or more minutes before finally dropping me off because she didn't want me walking inside alone while he was still out there. I agreed, so we turned the street to leave. That is not what happened. What did happen was right after we turned, we saw another car and we just figured it was another car until we realized it was the same guy in the truck. We proceeded to drive across the town trying to lose him he honked his horn and turned his high beams at us and was driving up our ass the whole time. My friend somehow managed not to drive recklessly the entire time this was happening. She's an incredibly skilled driver. We called the police soon after he started chasing us and my friend started driving over to the police station while I was on the phone with the operator. We pulled into the parking lot of the police station and he followed us in. We proceeded to drive in circles around the parking lot. About three or four times he waited on the other side of the parking lot to try to hit us with his car. He did this until an officer showed up and blocked him in. Then we both parked and started to talk to the officer. Apparently because we were in an old beater car and then we were parked behind his trailer, he was convinced that we were trying to steal stuff from him. 
He was still screaming when he was parked and the officer was talking to him. The officer told both of us it was a misunderstanding and told us to go home. We went back later with me and my friend's mother to the police station to ask about having officers patrol the area for a while. I'm currently in my house. This happened in the evening about 10 p.m. ish. My neighbor got off with a warning and he's in the house next door. I don't think I'll be sleeping tonight. I know I can't really do anything because he lives next door. I'm afraid to press charges in case he gets violent. I don't know if he actually thought we were going to steal from him or he's on drugs or just crazy. But yeah, that's my neighbor and I hope I don't have the misfortune to ever run into him again. I'm a female, 45. The story happened many years ago when I was around 8 or 9. My parents and I lived in a very beautiful, big old house that used to be a hotel in the 19th century. The house had four extra apartments and in one of them lived a middle-aged guy who we'll call F. The house was placed on a very small but long road that went in between fields and a small forest, all of it going downhill before it ended right by the beach. There were maybe 15 houses and only one kid my age, so I'd sometimes visit with the adults in the area. There were a few incidents with F, the guy who rented one of the apartments. The first one happened to be when my friend and I were roller skating, and we met F, who was out on his bicycle. We asked him if he would tow us, because we were tired, and he let us hold on his bike. At first, we thought he was great because not all adults would have been okay with that idea. But the ride didn't go very well. Once we held him to the bike, he started going faster and faster, and I mean really fast. It was summertime, and we only had on skirts or shorts, and back then we didn't have a lot of protective gear, so we absolutely didn't want to fall down. We started out by politely asking him to go slower, but he didn't listen at all. Then we started getting near a really big hill where gravity would always make you go way too fast so we would always zigzag our way down to make it down safely. At this point we were screaming at him to stop but he did the opposite. He started standing up on his bike so he could go even faster and then he told us to let go of the bicycle if we didn't like it. But there was no way we could have done that without falling and he knew that. Even if he didn't know he could clearly hear the fear in our voices but he didn't stop before we were a good bit past the hill and that's when we confronted him afterwards. He said he only did what we wanted him to do and that was our own fault. The second incident is the real creepy encounter that I had with this guy. By the time I just thought it was a bit weird. My mom on the other hand got really mad and as an adult I now understand why. I had met F in the driveway and he invited me in to get a cup of tea. I remember sitting on his couch and not liking the tea because it had no sugar. When I asked for some, he refused to give me any. Maybe he said he didn't have any, but anyway, I didn't like the tea and he kind of forced me to drink it anyway, saying how I was the one who wanted it and he went through the trouble of making it and so on. He got kind of mad, so I did what he told me because he was an adult and I was only a child. That evening I told my mom and she right away took the phone and called him. Then she yelled at him for endangering us girls while we were roller skating and got even more angry when she told him to never invite me into his apartment and especially to never force a little girl to do anything. This could have been the end of the story but I actually met another guy about 10 years later and he told me that F had informed him that I was the kind of girl that just needed to be cornered and pressured a bit and then I would put out. Yikes. A couple of weeks ago someone had dropped off groceries at my door with two coffees. The groceries were odd. Had lubricant, lollipops, not your normal grocery shop. I thought it was delivered to the wrong apartment and as there was no receipt on confirmation in the bag, I left it in the lobby but no one claimed it. A week later, a letter was slipped under the door with $200 in it. 
The letter was from a man talking about his recent hardship and how he'd like to talk and hear my voice. Again, I was a little naive, so I took the note to the building manager, thinking that it was meant for someone else. He thought it was so strange. He called the number on the letter, and it turns out it was the man in the building next door saying he wants to be friends. The buildings are really close together, and you can see into my apartment if the blinds are open. My building manager told him to leave me alone, and I just stay out of the building. I thought it was over, but today I heard someone pacing in the hallway outside my apartment for a couple minutes. I went to leave an hour later and there's this coin in front of my door, dead center, like it had been placed there. The only way it could get there would be if it was placed there, or if my neighbor dropped it, as my neighbor should be the only person that walks past my door. But based on where I found it, it makes me feel like it was deliberately placed there. I wouldn't think twice about the coin, but with what's been happening, it's making me really anxious. Update. Two days after the coin incident, I left my apartment and a man in his 60s or 70s approached me, straight away telling me that he's selling his car and if I would like to take a look at it. So I have a number plate and will be reporting it to the police. I'm a 26 year old female. I recently moved into an apartment with my boyfriend, 27 male. We instantly fell in love with the place and the price. We got approved and moved in rather quickly. The place is in a college town area. There is a bar nearby, grocery stores, and fast food places. Nothing out of the ordinary or sketchy. On the day that we moved in, our landlord gave us a key and briefed us on our neighbors. There were only four apartments in the complex. The landlord said they were all very reserved for the most part. One neighbor is very scared of COVID-19, so they stay inside. The neighbor across from us seems to be very reserved as well. Now, I saved the best for last. Our bottom floor neighbor, let's call him Cal. As we were walking up towards our place, our landlord said, Oh yeah, that's Cal. He is very weird. My boyfriend and I looked at each other. Like, what the fuck does that mean? His windows and doors were wide open. The landlord explained that they did not have AC at the moment. We ignored it and continued unpacking. We had prior plans to leave town, so we did not spend the first few nights there. Upon arrival, we discovered why he was weird. When we first saw him, we said hello and made some comment about the weather. He seemed confused or disoriented and said, uh huh. Yeah, okay. As the days passed, we would say hi. He would say hi back at times. It was obvious that he was socially awkward. If I pulled into my parking lot and he saw me, he would scurry into his room. I thought it was unusual but brushed it off. We thought that was the extent of him being weird. But boy, were we fucking wrong. Slamming, shoving, and hitting his own door started at night, only at night. The slamming and banging was so loud that it woke us up. When we got closer to our door, we heard him yelling. We finally understood why he was deemed weird. This continued for many nights in a row. We would notice that he would just stand in the middle of the parking lot and talk to himself, and if he sees me, he goes back inside. Things escalated the past week. It was late in the evening, we were chilling watching TV, when we heard a knock. We immediately knew who it was, since Cal was chilling outside with the neighbors. My boyfriend answered the door and Cal asked if we had seen a young Asian woman walking around. My boyfriend said no, and he just walked away. Last night, it came back home from visiting the family. Immediately after I came home, Cal went upstairs. When my boyfriend answered the door, Cal asked if we had seen his mom walking around. My boyfriend sternly said no and closed the door. To conclude, this morning at 6am, we heard an extremely loud knock. I woke up immediately. I went to the door and did not see anyone, though I saw a flashlight. I got super scared and woke my boyfriend up. 
we looked out and saw that there was a police officer looking for Cal. From what we could make out, Cal called the police due to hearing a gunshot and a young woman scream. My boyfriend had been up since 5am and stated that he didn't hear any of that. At this point, we were on edge with this dude. If he comes upstairs again, we are going to tell him to ask the other neighbors. Update, right after I finished typing this, the previous tenant texted me. He stated that Cal was really weird while they lived there. Cal would talk to himself. He caught security camera footage of Cal going up the stairs near the door and started working out. Cal noticed the cameras and went back downstairs. We will be installing cameras very soon. My boyfriend is officially in I wish a motherfucker would mode. I forgot to mention, before I visited my family I heard someone yell hello and shuffle around my front door. I can only imagine who it was. It creeped me out because it was right after my boyfriend left to go golfing. Also, my boyfriend told me they heard Cal go up the stairs after the police left at 6am and say hello, trying to get someone's attention. I mentioned this in the comments, but my plan is to call the non-emergent police line in the event he continues to be erratic towards myself or us. I really hope it does not get to that point. I know this man is mentally ill, however, it does not negate the fact that he purposely tries to talk to us in the late hours of night. Compassion is shown, but boundaries will be set. I wish him the best, but our safety, including his, is prudent. Last update. The police were called because we heard him yell and scream for help. The police came out and said they already knew about him. It seems like he's harmless, but we're still keeping our distance for our safety and his. I'm a young guy with a nighttime job living in an area of town that has gotten pretty sketchy the past decade or so. The police are here almost once a month to sort out some kind of violent or drug related crime. I'm a very routine focused person, so for the past 8 years I've been going to work at 1.30am. I always take my dog out for a walk at 1am. In fall of last year, I went for a routine dog walk one misty night at 1am like I usually do. I made a right turn after exiting the gate and just as I passed the corner of my apartment building, I noticed a fuzzy shape on the ground outside the gate of the neighboring building. I stopped in my tracks and took in what I was looking at. I determined it was just a cat laying on its side on the pavement. I thought this was odd, but since I knew my dog would most certainly bark at it and wake up the entire neighborhood, I chose to turn around and take a different route for the walk than usual. For the rest of this walk, I was reflecting on that cat. There was something very off about the cat just laying relaxing on the ground in the middle of the night with no people around. Once my walk had looped back to the gate, I decided to take the corner again to see if the cat was still there. Mind you, a full 15 minutes had gone by at this point. Sure enough, it was still there, same position and everything. Now I thought the scene was even more odd. I took my dog up to the apartment, put my work clothes on, grabbed my car keys and headed out. As I exited the elevator, the image of the relaxed cat laying outside was still in the back of my mind, perplexing me. Instead of going into the underground garage, I decided to instead go out to the main gate one last time and check if the cat was still there. I exited, turned the corner once again. The cat was still laying there. Since my dog wasn't with me this time, I just approached it to check if the cat was okay. When I got to it and looked down, I stared at it for a good while. The cat wasn't breathing at all. It was dead. No question about it. I had my suspicions that that might be the case so I wasn't extremely shocked. But something was still off about it. A cat wouldn't just lay in the middle of the paved sidewalk to die of natural causes. There was no noticeable blood on or around it, so I began thinking that the cat might have jumped off from one of the balconies. Just as that thought hit me, a raspy voice spoke to me from above. Yep, there she is. The voice said in a very matter-of-fact type of tone. Quickly glanced up. Through the mist, I saw a middle-aged woman on the fifth floor balcony leaning over the railing, looking down at me with a lit cigarette in her hand. 
When our eyes met, a cold shiver shot through the top of my scalp all the way down to my toes in an instant. I may have misinterpreted her facial expressions due to the fog, but I could swear that she was smiling when our eyes met. Without responding, I immediately turned and quickly walked to the gate. As I walked, I could hear her laughing. I practically sprinted to my car in the garage. Once I sat down inside, I considered whether I should call the police or not, as every aspect of what I just witnessed gave me the impression that the neighbor of mine had killed the cat. I dialed the number but decided not to, as they may want me to stick around for questioning, which would make me late for work. So I went on with my night as usual, doing my best to forget the incident for now. When I got home later, the cat wasn't there anymore. About a week later, I walked past a neighbor living in the same building as me. We had some usual neighborly small talk, but she interrupted herself to ask me whether I heard what happened in the other building last week. I said I didn't. She told me that a woman on the fifth floor had thrown her cat from the balcony in rage because it peed on her living room carpet. The cat apparently did not die immediately, but all its legs were broken from the impact with the concrete pavement. Police were called around 5 a.m. when another dog walker saw the cat. The woman had still been out on the balcony at this point, talking to the guy while he called the police. I believe the woman's other cats were taken away from her, and she was fined thousands of dollars. She still lives there, and I sometimes see her leaning over the balcony railing when I'm walking my dog. I never interacted with her after that, and I sincerely hope that she never speaks to me again. So this happened about a year ago, and at the time, I was 17. I'm a male, so this guy hired me to do basic stuff around the building he managed. However, he always gave me this weird feeling like something wasn't right with him. But he paid me $20 an hour, so I stuck by, despite feeling like I should leave. He would often talk to me about how everyone else he had hired in the past would quit because they were weirded out by him. He would ask me if I was weirded out, but I would say no because he's paying me a lot. After a month of this, it came to a climax. He pulled me away from sweeping and told me to take a seat. He told me that I would have to distract him or else he would do something that he would regret. So for an hour I just talked to him about anything and everything. Throughout the entire talk he kept saying that he was a terrible person and has done horrible things. He told me I would hate him if I knew what he had did. Throughout the conversation I was worried he would do something so I contemplated running or fighting but instead I just kept talking. Eventually he seemed to calm down and said I could go home for the day, but asked if I wanted ice cream first. I refused. I got home and texted him that I was leaving. He apologized, and I haven't heard from him since. I want to start off by stating this in my first ever Reddit post, but I've always loved listening to stories from the subreddit on YouTube, and I wanted to share my own. For some background info, I'm female and was 17 at the time of the story. I used to work at a pizza place in my hometown. The job sucked in many ways, but the worst part about it was that my manager had no problem leaving girls alone to close. Granted, the town I grew up in was small and boring, and most people left their doors unlocked, but I still thought it was risky. On this particular night, I was closing the shop alone at around 10. The last thing I had to do was take out the garbage on the way to my car and the dumpster as well as my car were located on the side of the building. While I was making my way to the dumpster, I immediately noticed a man making his way towards me from across the shop's parking lot. He was wearing jeans and a black sweatshirt and had some sports cap on. Right off the bat, my heart dropped and I got incredibly nervous. I threw the trash away and began speed walking to my car when the guy said something. You got a cigarette? My paranoia told me the question was sketchy as hell, and I struggled to respond for a moment. I just said no and got into my car, hastily trying to get in. I shit you not, as soon as I closed my door, he booked it to my car and tried to open it. Obviously, I had immediately locked it. I instantly started bawling my eyes out and turned on my car. 
The man clubbed my window with his fist a few times, without a word, before booking it again into the nearby streets. I called my mom and then the police once I got home, and they opened a small investigation, but could never find the guy. There are no other cases of something like this happening somewhere in this town, and so I think he was probably relocated somewhere else to avoid being caught. I really have no clue what the man wanted to do. Sorry if this was kind of lame or anticlimactic, but it was pretty damn scary to me. So to the man that tried to get into my car, let's not meet again. I'm a 17 year old female. I work at a convenience store, gas station, located on the trucker route. Given that information, I'm sure you can deduce that the people coming into the store aren't always the most respectable. I've had people get a little too friendly, but it's always been a line between, well maybe they're just being really nice and I took it the wrong way, and this is kind of creepy. But one customer a couple days ago didn't leave much room for debate. I had a guy, at least 30 to 35, if not older, come in. He got his things and came to the register. He started his interaction with, Hello beautiful, how you doing? Alrighty, I felt uncomfortable just by that tone. But I shook it off and simply said, I'm doing alright, or something like that. I figured that maybe he just had a weird way of greeting people. He wanted cigarettes, so I asked for his ID to which he said something that sounded really creepy and how I just wanted to have his picture or a dress or something and he also winked at me while saying it. To which I laughed uncomfortably and said, you should know I'm 17. He responded, yeah right, as though I was lying or something. I got him his cigarettes and cashed him out without saying anything else. I think he called me beautiful again as he left, which just made me uncomfortable all over again. This all happened last week. I was working a late night shift at a bakery. I was starting to close down and I had locked the door behind me as I was walking to my car. When I was at my car, I saw a paper that was stuck to the side of my car, but I've heard a lot of stories about people getting kidnapped when getting stuff on their car in the middle of the night, so I didn't want to take the risk. When I got home, I took the paper off my car and it said, hey, and then my real name, which I'm not going to put on here. I thought it could be one of my coworkers, but I didn't know I was going to be totally wrong. Fast forward to the next day. I called off work because I felt ill and had a massive headache. Around 9am, one of my coworkers called me and asked if I could tell my friend to stop calling the shop asking for me. I asked her who it was, but she said that the person didn't want to give her his name. After the call ended, I called all of my male friends and asked them if they were calling into my work and they all said no. Nothing more happened until Thursday came around. I was cooking up some food and I had forgotten to buy onions, so I put on my shoes and walked to the nearest shop, which was about 10 minutes from where I live. I was walking up and down the aisle because I was looking for a specific type of garlic powder. When I found it, I was on my way to get the onions. I was grabbing the onions and when I was about to turn around, there was this tall man that had to be in his 60s standing right behind me. I apologized for bumping into him and said that I didn't see him. He told me that it was just fine and told me that I was pretty. I didn't know what to say back other than thank you and smile. He then proceeded to put his hands on my back and rub it gently. That's when I had enough, so I told him I had to go and quickly walked away paid for my things and headed home. I had kind of forgotten about what happened some hours later. The next few days nothing really happened more than I got a letter and some phone calls at night. On Sunday it took a horrible turn. I was at home watching a movie in the living room which is right next to the main door. There's a wall blocking the way which means I can see out but people can't see in. I was halfway in this movie when I heard a loud bang sound, so I tried to look out. I saw the same man trying to get into my house. He was screaming my name and how he was in love with me and how he thought I looked like his wifey the first time he saw me at my job. I paused. I had completely forgotten that this man had been a customer at my work. 
I tried as quickly and as quietly as possible to go upstairs, but he started to throw his whole body against the door, so I sprinted to my room and locked my door. I called 911 and explained the whole thing that was going on, and the police arrived at my house in 15 minutes. They found the man in my house hiding under the table, and he had a camera, rope, a pocket knife, and gloves. They took him away, but other than that, I don't know what happened to him. I can't imagine what would happen if the police hadn't gotten there in time. To the creepy customer, let's not ever meet again. I work as a merchandiser, and one of my stores happens to be in a very high crime area. Tonight, I entered my car, instinctively locked the doors, and grabbed my phone to put in my next job site address. Not five seconds after I got in, a disheveled man aggressively ran up to the passenger side and started forcefully yanking on the handle trying to get in. I turned the engine on and got the hell out of there so fast. As I was driving off, he was screaming something at the top of his lungs. I'm not sure what that was all about, but I definitely dodged a bullet tonight. That was frightening. This is something I've never really told anyone about, but I've been thinking about it a lot lately, so here it is. A few years back, 2015 or 2016, when I was 18 or 19, I used to work at a little cafe inside a car parts factory. It was basically a full out but compact restaurant kitchen and lunch room for the workers to eat there. Well, this one day, I get a call from my best friend, coworker. She's all kinds of upset because of this new creepy temp worker that made her feel severely uncomfortable by asking her a bunch of personal questions like what she drove, where she lived, if she was single, had any kids, when she got off work, etc. She didn't want to walk out to her car alone. Mind you, she was my age too, 18 or 19, and this dude was in his mid to late 30s, if not already in his 40s. And we're in Flint, Michigan, so we weren't about to take our chances. I drove up to the parking lot, found her car, parked next to it, and she has a security guard escort her out. We didn't see the guy then, but she described him to me and the security guard, and that was that for a few days. Someone found him and told him to stay away from her, and he did. But then he met me. I knew exactly who he was as he stepped up to the register to place his lunch order just from the description I had been given and by the creepy vibes he was giving off. He pulled the same intense Q&A on me that he had done to my friend too. But instead of telling him to fuck off or calling security or anything like that, I just told him a bunch of straight up lies. I told him I drove a blue 2012 Honda Civic, which I knew for fact was one of the second shift manager's vehicle who always parked near the front of the building. I also told him that my shift ended at 9.30, which was really the time that I usually slipped out for a cigarette break. So when 9.30 hit later that night, I walked out to smoke a cigarette and saw exactly what I was expecting to see, that stupid creep in the parking lot close to the area that the Honda Civic was parked. He was just pacing back and forth between two vehicles that was parked a few spaces down in the same row, playing on his phone the entire time. At one point, he glanced up and saw me staring at him, but I had my big leather winter coat on and a hat, so I don't know if he recognized me at first from the distance or not. I finished my smoke and went back inside and explained the entire situation to the security guards, one of which was the original guard that had escorted my friend out to her car a couple days before, and they were dying laughing at the fact that I pulled one over on this prick and had actually caught him being shady. I'm not sure exactly what they did about it, but I do know they immediately went out to confront him in the parking lot and that the guy was fired the same week. To this day, I still don't know what his intentions were, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it couldn't have been anything good. So ultimately, the moral of the story is, always have your friends back and trust your instincts because if you don't, you could end up cornered in a parking lot and possibly attacked or abducted by a creepy guy who asked you too many questions. Edit, since I didn't include this originally. After my friend and I were informed that this guy was fired, we were told his full name, and my friend paid to do a background check on him. 
it came back with a violent criminal history of domestic abuse, assault, and battery with a weapon. Jail time served for violating a PPO and parole and some other things. Over four years ago, I worked at a warehouse in a small town that I'm from. I decided to leave after my health started to get worse physically and I was diagnosed with panic disorder and severe anxiety after the situation I'm about to tell you about. This changed the way I developed friendships after this job, that's for certain. So I started this job on April Fool's Day 2018 and I had no high expectations of the job. All I wanted was to do my job, get paid, and go home as I have two children at home. The job wasn't hard and it made pretty good money for all the duties considered so I really couldn't complain. I worked second shift for about five months then I went to the day shift. While working the second shift I kept to myself mostly until one day I met someone after we struck up a conversation about gaming. We'll name him Jeff. Well Jeff was a pretty good guy and we had a lot of things in common. I went home that night and he popped up at my suggested friends on Facebook, which was odd, but I decided to add him. When I did, we started talking more at work, until he suggested that we should hang out, so we hung out pretty frequently. We were friends for a month at this point, and one day, he decided that he was going to introduce me to his partner. She seemed decent at first, super nice, didn't seem to be the judgmental type, so I was cool with her. From then on, I would hang out with him when my kids were spending time with their mother. One time, we were talking at a restaurant and he started to vent to me. Dude, she's such a bitch sometimes. The other day, I forgot to take out the trash and she threatened to stab me if I didn't. I've never been in a relationship where someone's threatened me, but she's got good intentions, dude. When he said that to me, I was concerned, but of course, we'd only been friends for a month, so... I thought maybe he was being morbidly jokingly so I chuckled at him. He gave me a pretty serious look and said, I'm not joking, she really did. That concerned me. Fast forward about 8 months, they are still together and we hung out pretty regularly. One day we were all talking and he seemed a little off that day so I asked him what was wrong in front of her. He flashed a smirk and said, nothing dude, I'm just a little tired. He didn't have his eyes on me though. He had them on her when I asked that. When we went to work the next day, I asked him again. Do you promise it's just between us? Of course, I agreed. He said that he was breaking up with her and she went a little crazy. He said that she grabbed her gun and pointed it at him and said, If I can't have you, no one will. He said he defused the situation and is trying to look for a way out. Not really knowing what to say, I just said, You'll figure it out, man. If you need somewhere to go, you can come stay with me until you get her out of your house. Fast forward into the next year, he finally decided to leave her. When he did, she flipped out again. This time, he told her over text. She said that she was going to find him and kill him, and he was actually out of work that day with a vacation day. He sent me a text and said, Hey, let me know if she comes over to work looking for me. This struck me as odd because I had no idea about the situation that was unfolding. She actually did come over to our job and she asked me where he was. I said, I have no idea. I thought he was with you and you guys went out of town or something. All she did was roll up her window and drive off. I called him and told her that she came by and he called the police about it. They found her up the road with a loaded gun in her car. Two months later, he decided to talk to her again. He asked if I had seen her around, and I hadn't. He said, I'd take some vacation days if I were you. Dumbfounded, I asked him why. Because she's out of jail, and her cousins are in town trying to find people she has personal vendettas with. You're one of them. At that point, I was terrified. I grabbed my kids and went out of town, took two weeks off of work. Came to find the next day, her and her cousins went to the next town over and shot and killed three people in an apartment. The reason why he knew that they were coming after me is because they made a Facebook messenger group 
that he was included in and set a list of names. Everyone regarded it as spam and decided to disregard the message, but he knew what it was. Three of the names on the list were the people they shot. The fourth name on the list was mine. After they found evidence, he decided to go public about the group and the screenshots that he had. They were all charged with first degree murder. From then on, I was very careful about who I stuck my neck out for, because even though he knew the context of the list and her intentions, he decided not to inform anyone else. Needless to say, we aren't friends anymore, and I dodged a bullet, literally. This happened a few years back, but it was so wild that I tell everyone about it when I'm talking about weird encounters. I worked at Woodfield Mall in the department store. I usually got out by 9 p.m., but this day had ended up there closer to 10 p.m. As I was balancing out my register, I had this intense feeling of dread, like my stomach dropped, and I just had a terrible feeling about leaving the building. If you don't know, Woodfield Mall is one of the biggest malls in America, and it's very busy all the time. I made my way to the employee break room, where the stairwell that led to the second level parking was. The same feeling of dread came over me again. I decided to call my friend and keep him on the phone until I made it to my car. When he answered, I literally said, I know I'm being stupid, but I'm just nervous to walk to my car alone. As I opened the door to the parking garage, all I see is a giant parking lot, nearly empty, my car, an extra large SUV, and about four spots away from my car are two cars, surrounded by a group of ten very seedy looking people. I immediately tell my friend what I see, and he was like, just keep talking to me and walk as fast as you can to your car, which had my heart racing because I had to walk right past them to get to my car. I hurriedly walked by and jumped into my car. I let my friend know I was good and panicked for nothing. We disconnected and then I hear a tap 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 on my window. My heart sank as I turned to see who was tapping on my window. Of course, it was one of those creeps. I rolled my window down a fourth of the way. I'm in a huge SUV and he was somewhat short, so he couldn't reach in through the window. He asked me if I had a lighter. He must have seen me light up a cigarette as soon as I got in my car. I told him my lighter's on his last leg and might not light, but I hand it to him. He began to try to spark it while stopping to ask me all sorts of weird questions. He kept asking me if I wanted to go for a walk. Around an empty mall parking lot? No thanks. I declined multiple times. At that point, I'm just feeling annoyed until I see him pull his own lighter and light his cigarette. Now my head was spinning. Maybe he just used the lighter excuse to talk to me, or maybe it was something worse. Some things become a little blurry conversation-wise because the fear took over. But I remember seeing his friends gathering in front of my car, which made me extremely nervous. I tell the guy to watch out because I'm going to flick my cigarette out the window. So he backs up, and I flick it towards his friends hoping they might scatter. One guy got mad and started getting loud, so I just apologized and said it was an accident. He walked off with a pissy attitude and his friends followed. Thank God. I tell the guy by the window that I have to go, as my gaslight goes on and makes a ping sound. The guy hears it and pops up right next to my window and says, Looks like you're going to run out of gas, Miss Lady. Hope you don't break down on the side of the road. Followed by a small, mischievous smile, and then says, Maybe I'll see you around. At that point, I don't care if I run his feet over, and I just floored it out of there and could hear them all laughing. I don't know what the fuck that was all about, but it was absolutely terrifying and I spent the entire time looking over my shoulder at the gas station and on my drive home. Stay aware friends, and always trust your gut. I was 17 when this happened. I had an early morning shift at a restaurant and used a bus to get there. When I got to the bus stop, someone was already there. This was strange because it was so early in the morning. 
I started to walk to my workplace just to notice the man started following me. Seeing the man follow me got me scared and I started to run. There was just so much off about this man. The whole time he looked at the ground but also started to run when he saw me running. I quickly ran to the back doors and saw him coming in the same direction. When I closed the doors, he was just a couple meters away from me, and I saw that he tried to open the door that I had locked right after me. When I was pacing inside the restaurant, my coworker came to me and said someone was trying all the windows to get in. We called the cops, and later they told us that the man was carrying a tiny saw with him. Sometimes I think about what he would have done if he would have been quicker than me. Anyways, the saw man. Let's not meet again. America Online was big when I was 13, or in other words, AIM, which stood for, you guessed it, AOL Instant Messenger. It was around 2002 when I would have been 13 and in 8th grade. I had many times went into chat rooms by myself or with friends goofing around. Unfortunately, unsolicited photos were a thing then too, but usually you could stay clear of it by the chat room you entered. I didn't have any photos of myself. And back then, you had to take a digital photo and upload it from your camera. Plus, I was 13 and self-conscious, which I'm sure anyone can relate with. But one day, a guy popped up on my screen wanting to chat. It went fine at first. I was very naive back then, and we quickly fell into a pattern of talking. His name was Dave, and he lived in California. Eventually, he was telling me that he loved me, etc., But the problem was, he was 19. Now, I wasn't proud of this, but at first, being 13, I just sent him pictures of some random girl and said it was me. He instantly fell for me, telling me that age was just a number and how mature I was. Now at this point, he did not live near my state, so there was no chance of us meeting. Eventually, he told me that his mom was moving up to a city that was an hour and a half away from me. He started begging me to see him and to go to a movie, anything. I had to break the catfishing truth and say that those were not pictures of me, but someone else. He was furious. Dave forgave me a few days later saying, I want to meet you because I love you. All the things you say to a young girl to get her to swoon. I think back and I'm like, wow, I was 13. So I told my best friend everything and that I wanted her to go with me to meet up with him. There was a whole plan about him driving to see me and going to the movies to finally meet what I thought was the love of my life. I had been brainwashed into believing this was normal. I didn't tell my mom of course and honestly she didn't notice any of it was going on to begin with. So on the day that my friend and I were going to meet up with Dave, my friend's mom came and picked us up from school. She said something that made my stomach drop into nothingness. She said, Chrissy, you're not going to the movies. You're not going to meet that man. You're going to get seriously hurt or kidnapped, and I can't allow you guys to go. I cried and cried because I honestly thought I could handle everything, and I'd be fine. She told me that she wasn't going to tell my mom, but I had to promise not to speak to him again, and never plan to meet up with a stranger online. He ended up showing up and was upset that I wasn't there. He went on AIM, flying off the handle like I hadn't seen at that age. It scared me. It scared me so much of how close I was to this man being near me. I never talked to Dave again, but I easily believe I would have been kidnapped or worse if my best friend's mom hadn't stepped in. My mom would have been none the wiser. I was none the wiser. But I'm here today and I learned a dire lesson. I'm a 31 year old female, mother of two young girls and I fear that they will make the same mistake I did. When I was 16, I wasn't really getting the attention I wanted from boys at school. All of my friends had, or at one time had a boyfriend while in high school, but I had yet to be asked out, yet alone kissed. The depressed feeling of going to school every day, feeling invisible, was too much for me to handle. 
I needed some sort of attention, and I was willing to try anything. I had heard people talking about this one site called Plenty of Fish, and thought about giving it a shot. Now, I wasn't trying to meet anyone from that site. My plan was just to talk, flirt, and I guess just practice being comfortable in my own skin, so I could use it in real life. One day, after an awful day of school, I got home and just decided to do it. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Looking back now, I was an idiot. I wanted to grow up so fast when I should have just been enjoying my teenage years. So I uploaded a picture of myself where I appeared to be a little older than I actually was. I added my name to my profile but used my middle name rather than my first name. I thought at the time that I was being super safe. Jeez, I was a moron. I listed my age as 18. I know, I know. The first few weeks, I would get messages from guys, some nice, some a tad perverted, but nothing too strange or meaningful. It was fun, but I hadn't really met anyone I vibed with. I was kind of getting a little bored of this experiment. That was all stopped when I got a message from Greg. Greg was 22, pretty good looking and had the most beautiful eyes. He came off as sweet, but a little bit shy, which was almost the same as me and we hit it off. He wasn't like the other guys that had messaged me previously. He was actually interested in the things I had to say. He would ask follow-up questions all the time and mention things I shared with him in later conversations. He seemed like he was the perfect guy. Over the next few weeks, we talked every night. I literally was in my room after dinner until bedtime chatting it up with him. I told him my biggest secrets Things I hadn't even told to my best friend at the time. I eventually told him I was only 16 years old, but he surprisingly said that he was okay with it. It was the same night that we officially started our online relationship. This is where things started to change. At first, it just seemed like he was eager and persistent to meet up. I was so nervous at the thought of him not liking me if we met up, so I was very hesitant. Over time, it seemed like he would not take me saying later or in a few months without trying to pressure me to meet up with him. I got to the point where I almost thought I owed him a meetup, like I was the one being unreasonable. I was lost, unsure what to do, and I guess I gave in to the pressure. We scheduled a time and place to meet up, but that night, I was called into work. I told him we would need to reschedule. This is where he lost his shit and I became scared for my life. He started calling me over and over again, leaving me messages like, I know you're lying. Who is he? Where are you? Why are you doing this to me? I was at work, so I didn't respond to him until about two hours later. I told him I was at work and that we would meet up soon. He responded with, I know you're lying, bitch. I'm going to find you and the dude, and I'm going to make you pay. You've been playing me this whole time. He even said that he went to my work and didn't see me. I had mentioned where I worked in previous conversations, but I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. I was in the back room most of the night, so he could have actually been serious. He continued to follow up with cursing me out and call me all sorts of names. Luckily, my dad was picking me up that night, so if he was out there, at least I had some sort of protection. I told my dad what was going on in the car ride home, and he made sure that no one was following us. I blocked him and deleted plenty of fish that night. I never used the online dating service after that, and I just hoped that my daughters would be smarter than I was. When I was a younger teen in high school, I was fairly popular on Snapchat and had a public profile with thousands of followers. I'm also a model, so I posted my face fairly regularly. Being a minor who was popular on Snapchat obviously garnered a lot of unwanted attention and tons of creeps and pedophiles. They were always hitting on me, even asking me for nudes. I was very, very open about being a minor and posted about it regularly in hopes that I got some of the morally sound people to leave me alone, which it did. I was also as safe as I could be online. My location was never on. 
I didn't even model under my actual name. The closest I got to my location was my state. I didn't allow things I was tagged on to show up on my profile, etc. Despite this, being a victim of freaks was fairly normal for me, to the point where I would simply block and report and be completely unaffected. This is however one person who left a huge impact on me. We'll call him Carlos. I don't remember when he added me, but I remember that when he texted me, I was 15. He seemed pretty normal at first, asking me how I was, my interest, pretty standard stuff. He revealed that we had a mutual real life friend, an older boy who went to my high school, he revealed that he lived in a town maybe a few hours away. This was also something that was pretty normal for me to encounter as I was somewhat known in neighboring schools outside of my town, especially in the town that he said he was from. So it wasn't a huge red flag for me at all. No, I did not tell him what school I went to. Eventually, he began getting odd. His neutral compliments became less neutral, which also didn't concern me as I was used to being complimented and he wasn't being sexual. One day though, Carlos told me he wanted me to have sex with him and offered to pay me $500 and said that he would pay me $700 if I also sent nudes. I told him that I was a minor and I don't have sex and I asked him how old he was. Up until this point, I assumed that he was a minor as well. He told me that he was 20. I told him my age and he said my age was fine. I brought up that it was illegal and he told me that no one had to find out and began begging me to meet up with him. I showed my friend as I had never encountered something like this before. They told me to go along with it and maybe I could blackmail him. I told them that I wanted to report it instead but I wouldn't cut off communications as Snapchat to lead start conversation with people when he blocked them. Carlos continued to beg me, even telling me where he wanted to meet, a park. I told him that I don't like sex at all, so he started telling me that he could just hang out with me instead and tried to coerce me, saying that he could give me alcohol and drugs. I became scared to show my parents or the police and instead showed another friend to ask for help and advice on what to say to him. My parents were extremely abusive and they actually punished me for being groomed in the past. She ended up using my phone and cussing him out and blocking him for me. I deleted Snapchat and haven't used it since. Every time I think about that man, it gives me chills. I am sure that I'm not the only victim and cannot imagine how many others he has done the same thing to. I really wish I could have reported it, but I don't believe any of my previous reports actually did much. Sometimes though, I think a lot more of what ifs and began to feel a little guilty about the way the whole thing was handled. And I feel like I could have done something to prevent other victims. I'm sure that there are others before and after me. He was eerily casual about the whole ordeal. I thought I had it all. The perfect boyfriend, good grades, and got into my dream college. I was excited to start the next chapter of my life. We both got accepted into top colleges, and although they were at different schools, we were going to make it work. Nothing was going to break us up. Little did I know, he dumped me. He dumped me on graduation night. He was going to college and didn't want to be tied down. I was crushed and felt like the last three years of my life was a waste of time. I couldn't leave my house for weeks. I laid around and cried and felt sorry for myself. My mom came into my room and said, Go out. Enjoy your summer. You only have a few months until you're off to college where you'll meet so many new people. So I did just that. I called my friends, hung out, went to the beach, went to parties, just enjoying life. I was ready to move on. I wanted to casually date now, but nothing serious. I was leaving in a month and a half. I just wanted to have fun. My friends kept telling me about this app where you could swipe left or right if I thought they were attractive. Tinder. They were telling me I should create an account on there and meet guys. I honestly wasn't really interested in meeting guys online, but they downloaded the app on my phone and made an account for me anyways. For the first few days, I didn't even mess with it. 
until one night my friends came over and we were in my room hanging out listening to music. I grabbed my phone and opened the app and we started swiping away. We were having fun, laughing, joking, just having a good time. The next day I received a message from this guy named Mark. I read his message and decided to respond back. We casually started messaging each other, asking questions, getting to know each other. So we decided to exchange numbers. I told him I wasn't looking for anything serious as I was leaving for college soon. We started texting all the time, day and night. He wanted to meet up and hang out, but I wasn't really ready. He kept pressuring me, asking repeatedly, Come on, don't you want to meet me? I would just brush it off or change the subject. One day he got really upset and started blowing up my phone and getting angry. I had put my phone on silent and left it on my bed. I went downstairs and relaxed. When I came back, I had thousands of missed calls and messages. I couldn't believe it. This should have been my first red flag. I had text after text saying, Answer your phone. Pick up. Stop ignoring me. Don't you want to meet me? I finally replied, chill out, that I was downstairs. He changed his tone and apologized to me. I'm sorry. I just really like you and want to meet you in person. Please, I promise, it will be fine. For some reason, I finally gave in and said fine. I figured everything would be fine if we met up in a public area. I told him, let's meet up at a coffee shop around noon, tomorrow. He replied, I can't make it. Let's meet up in the park around 6 p.m. I was hesitant, but said okay. I called my friend asking her if she was free tomorrow so she could come meet this guy I had been talking to on Tinder since I thought it would be better not to go alone. My friend is amazing and said yes. I told her I'd pick her up at about 5.30 at night. I went to sleep and the next morning, I woke up to several text messages from Mark. Good morning. I can't wait to see you. Don't be late. I replied, Morning, I'll see you later. Later that day, I got ready and called my friend to tell her that I would be on my way in 20 minutes. She apologized but said something came up and she couldn't make it. I hung up with her and was about to call Mark, telling him I had to reschedule, that something came up. But I knew he would complain and I didn't want to hear it, so I decided to just go. I called him up and told him I was on my way. I have never been to that park, so I put the directions into my phone. As I was driving, I had a weird feeling in my stomach telling me not to go. I decided to text my parents letting them know that I was going to meet a guy that I had been talking to on Tinder and gave them the address of the park we were meeting at. As I was getting close to the spot, there were tall trees everywhere, a small wooden fence around the whole area with only one way in and out. I pulled up into the parking lot and parked my car. I got out and looked around. No one was in sight. I called Mark. No answer. I text him. Hey, I'm here. No reply. I waited there for 25 minutes and nothing. Screw this, I'm leaving. As I was about to get into the car, there was this black van with tinted windows pulling up. They pulled up next to me and a man got out wearing a long black shirt with stained jeans and a baseball cap. Mark? Is that you? What took you so long? He stood there quietly staring at me with a grin on his face, not saying a word. Hello? I was beyond annoyed. Hello, are you going to talk? Sorry I'm late. I, I was having car trouble. He was acting weird. Can I give you a hug? It's nice to meet you in person. Come on, let's sit down. We went to a nearby bench and sat down. We were talking for a little while. Something was off. He was acting strange. This is not the same person I had been talking to on the phone. Um, it's getting late. I need to go. No, don't go. Stay. No, I'm sorry. I need to be getting home. As I got up to walk away, he grabbed my arm. Please don't go. Stay. I said, I'm sorry. I needed to go. When I got to my car, he grabbed my wrist, hard, squeezing it. I said, don't go. 
I yanked my arm away from him and said, don't you ever put your hands on me. As I opened my car door, he slammed it shut. I'm not ready to go yet. I told Mark to get away from me. I pushed him out of the way. He stumbled a little. I quickly opened my door and hopped in my car and locked it. I started to put my keys in to start the car and he started pounding on my car. I jumped and screamed, shaking trying to get the key into the ignition. Let me in. I screamed at him to go away. I started the car and sped off. Looking in the mirrors, I could see him standing there with this weird look on his face. I went straight home and blocked his number and deleted Tinder. Never again would I ever go on a dating site. I'm a 25 year old female. I had recently moved to a new city, which is something that a lot of people from my home city are doing. Thus, there's a specific group on Telegram for people from my home city to find housemates, rental buddies. Ben reached out to me after I posted my expectations. It must be a two bedroom, two bath condo, in my budget, etc. And he said he was interested. He said he wanted to meet up first. I figured it was a good idea to meet up a few times before going house hunting together. So we set up a lunch meeting. During lunch, the only thing that annoyed me is him saying he hoped I could lower my budget. I felt like it was a waste of time, and clearly our expectations weren't compatible. However, things went weird after lunch. When I was walking towards the subway station, he kept tapping on my shoulder occasionally. Although I felt the frequency was weird, I convinced myself that that was just how he was in general. Based on our previous chit chat, I learned where Ben lives and he's supposed to get off at station A and switch to another line. While I would get off at station B, two stops after station A, and then switch on to another line. Because I'm quite new to the city, I didn't realize he had gotten off at station B until I got off myself. He followed me and switched the line with me while trying to start a different conversation with me. One stop before my actual station, I live nearby, I told Ben that I had to get off to do some shopping and ready to say goodbye. Ben followed me off again and went to the grocery store with me. I kept telling him that he could leave and I was fine shopping by myself, but he insisted on staying. Every time I turned around in the grocery store, Ben was standing real close to me. Like if he had boobs, they'd be in my face. I felt super uncomfortable and just grabbed two four liter bottle of water and went to the cashier. While I was paying, Ben grabbed my water and offered to take it to the Airbnb I was staying at. I tried to decline politely, but he wouldn't hand me back my water. I didn't want to have my body touched with him, so I didn't want to try to take the water back by force and kind of let him take those waters to my Airbnb. My bad, I know. Ben made his way to the common area of my Airbnb. It's a shared house type. I didn't even invite him in. Then he kept on trying to start more and more conversations with me. At several points it was completely silent, but he still wouldn't leave. In the end, after hours, I had to ask him to leave. Days afterwards, he still kept texting me weird messages, which I didn't reply to at all. I blocked him after I moved out of the Airbnb as I didn't want to trigger him when he still knew where I lived. So this happened seven months ago. I was visiting San Diego for job interviews and staying at my favorite hotel in Serrano Mesa. For background, I'm a 40 year old man and I'm a pretty big guy. I'm 6'1 and a former strip club bouncer. Now onto the weirdness. On my third night, I was up pretty late hanging out with some old friends after my interviews. I got back to the hotel around 2 a.m. with some Sunny's Donuts after eating a few, drinking a few more, and watching South Park post-COVID, I decided to smoke before I went to bed. This made it now around 3 a.m. So I go downstairs, walk out front to the smoking area by the fountain, but there's another couple who's also staying at the hotel already there. I didn't want to impose, so I decided to just walk around the outside parts of the hotel while I smoked. I walked around the pool, the barbecue area, the basketball courts, then started back for the side door. As I did, 
A black sedan drove up alongside me and stopped. The window rolled down and a tiny Asian woman asked if I knew how to get out of the parking lot and back onto the street. Now from where we were when she asked me, this was literally a straight line about 150 feet in front of her, so I thought she was drunk or just blind. So I politely said yes, just keep going straight and turn left at the tree. She then asked me if I could get in the car and show her. Now, again, I'm a former strip club bouncer, and this woman looked very much like a Walmart, Ali Wong. There was absolutely no intimidation factor, but for some reason, I instantly felt uneasy. Again, it was literally right in front of her. She could see the road. Also, the windows were tinted far more than they should have been, and honestly, I couldn't tell if anyone else was in the car. I used the smoking as an excuse not to get in the car, but she said she didn't mind and gave me a very creepy smile. I politely declined again and pointed out that the road was literally right there, so I'd just be walking back in five seconds anyway. She asked me again if I would get in and show her. This was feeling like a weird kid ice cream truck situation. I mean guys, how often do decently looking women just drive up to you? and ask you to get in their car at 3 a.m. in a hotel parking lot. How often does anyone ask a big bearded guy to hop in their car under these circumstances? Nothing about this was right. Again, I politely declined as I finished my smoke, and was luckily already standing right next to the hotel sliding door when all this started, so I just went in. The woman just drove off as she rolled up her window, right exactly to the exit she had asked me to show her. I told the front desk about it, and they said that they'll keep an eye out, but I'm quite sure nothing was ever done, or came of it. Just one of those things that really makes me wonder, what the hell did she want me to get in her car so badly for? A pretty man I am not, so it had to be some kind of scam. I just wonder exactly how much danger I was in. It was about 10pm, and I was staying at a hotel in downtown Chicago right by Lower Wacker Drive. I just got in an Uber Eats delivery because they weren't going to do room service because of COVID, pot bellies, important later. I was listening to music, but I had my hood up because it was freezing. I was smoking and this guy walked up to me and asked me for a few cigarettes. I gave him one and my lighter to use. Come on, you can give me more than that. I thought if I just gave him another cigarette, he would leave me alone. So I gave him another one. I expected him to say thank you, give my lighter back, and leave. He didn't do any of those things. He was standing right in front of me, and I started to get anxious. I moved back, and I'm essentially against the window for the area where you check in. He just kept standing there, and then noticed my bag of food. Can you give me some of your food? I told him that I was sorry, but it was just a sandwich and soup, because my husband ordered food from a different restaurant. Well, at least give me half of your sandwich then. I apologized again and said no. Then he started getting closer to me. I realized I needed to get away, but he was blocking me. Dude, give me my lighter back. I thought I needed to pretend that I wasn't freaking out. I put my cigarette out and put it back in the pack. I don't have any food and I could freeze to death. I'm sorry you don't have any food. I don't know what else to say. I didn't want to say, Hey, you're wearing a really nice looking coat and fancy sneakers. So give me some of your food then. He was right up on my face and I was scared because he seemed to be getting more angry. I'm sorry, I can't. Please move. Yes, you fucking can. At this point, I was terrified that he was going to hit me or something. So I banged on the window and the people from the check-in desk ignored me. He got really angry. What the fuck, bitch? Then like a miracle, my mom called and I answered. I had my headphones on that he didn't see. I started crying hysterically and started saying, Mom, Mom, thank God. Oh my God, this guy won't leave me alone. My mom told me to do anything to get away. At that moment, the guy stepped back and looked around. There was no one around, but I took advantage of him being distracted and pushed past him and ran inside. I cried so hard I could barely get the words out. I was so scared. 
And I realized because I tried to get help and nothing happened, if my mom hadn't called me, I don't know what would have happened. Later, I thought, even if I gave him the soup, it would have been like when I gave him the cigarette and it wasn't enough. I did go back down for a cigarette later, but I stayed by the revolving door. This woman was also smoking, and I told her what happened. She showed me her mace and said that all women should have it. My mom passed away on February 13th, 2023. This happened a year or more before that. I'm a 23-year-old female. My best friend and I, 21 female, went to our hostel in Poland and could not get the door open even though we had the code. These two men that claimed that they were staying there offered to help us, but we could not get in until someone else came out of the building. At first, these guys were nice and helped us carry our luggage up the stairs to the hostel. Surprisingly, there was no one at the check-in desk, even though the owner specifically asked that we check in at this time. Because we already knew what room we were supposed to be in, the two guys helped show us to our room, and we all made pleasant introductions. They were 32 and 33, if I remember correctly, and we let them know our age. They left us to get settled. But we realized at this point that without being able to check in, we did not have the keys to enter the building or even lock our door. Now here's where things get weird. We were already feeling a bit sketched out about the situation as it was clear that the hostel was just a converted apartment. But that's what you get for 10 euros a night, I guess. We then hear a brief knock at our door, and without waiting for a reply, these two dudes come back into our room to talk. I think. The younger one of the two starts talking to us about going out that night, and asks more questions about us. And at this point, my friend and I are exchanging looks, he mentions that he thinks I'm the one in charge because my friend looks young. Then proceeds to stroke his hand down her cheek. But wait, it gets better. He then reveals to us that he just did some cocaine and proceeds to offer us some, which we both adamantly decline. At this point, I just wanted him out of my room so we could have a chance to think, and this man did not want to leave. I finally backed him towards the door but he wouldn't move his body so I could close the door all the way and kept talking to us, even though I was trying to gently shove him out. I finally got the door closed and then used my body to hold it shut. At this point, my friend had tried to call the owner multiple times to no avail, so we decided to book another hostel and leave. We waited until we heard the guys leave and booked it out of there to our new hostel and are in the process of getting a refund since we booked and paid the fee online. So creepy hostile men, let's please never meet again. To get some context, I've been homeless with my mom and her emotional support animal for the last few months. When we first became homeless, it was my first year of college. Where I live, college is free for the first two years. And my college, after I gave them an explanation gave me and my mom a hotel room for a few weeks. The hotel room was fine, nothing special, but it was probably better than most considering it was like 170 per night. About two days into our stay, we went downstairs to do laundry, but the washers in the hotel were too expensive for us, so I texted her and was waiting by it for her to pull up the car so we could go to the laundromat instead. While I was waiting, I was on my phone, so I didn't notice my mom pull up and she yelled at me to hurry up and get in the car. While I grabbed the dog and my clothes, I noticed that she was talking to a man two doors down from our room. Our room was on the second floor, so I thought it was weird that she started a conversation from the car to someone upstairs. So when I got in the car, I asked her what it was about. She proceeded to tell me that after she yelled at me to hurry up, he responded to her that he'd be down in a minute so she was explaining to him that she was talking to me. We both thought it was weird that he responded like that to her, but we brushed it off that maybe he was waiting for someone from Uber or something. That was until we got back to see his door slightly open and him just staring out of it with just his face. I tried to brush it off again because I thought maybe he was still waiting for his Uber or Lyft or something because he had everything in his room turned off and it was still quite cold out in the beginning of spring. 
I would see this man staring out of his room with all his lights off periodically about half the time I left or was coming back to the room. My mom, who is a heavy smoker, would get scared by the man staring at her and would come back inside the room early. So throughout our stay, we tried our best to avoid the man if we could. If he had his door open, we went back inside. If we went outside or got back from somewhere and he was staring, we would avoid eye contact. A little later that night, I went out to the car for something and saw a couple sitting on the stairs talking about something, but I didn't think much of it. Later that night, it was probably about 3 in the morning, I was gaming with friends and my mom was watching TV. We're both night owls when all of a sudden our dog starts barking at the door. We thought it was weird since she had never just barked randomly at the door, only really barked when she wanted food we were eating or when she wanted to play. I grabbed her and put her in my lap, petting her while I played to calm down. Her barking at the door became something she did often during our stay, and it almost was exclusively at night, within the hours of 2 to 7 a.m. We didn't figure out what she was barking at until the end of our stay at that hotel. Our last day there, we saw that couple moving out of the room. Turned out they were right next to us, and my mom got to talking with them while I was putting my stuff in the car. It turned out that the couple was moving rooms because the man from two doors down was harassing people, knocking on their doors and singing to women through their doors late at night. Our dog was more than likely barking at this man whenever he approached our room, as one night we were woken by the sounds like a knock before our dog started barking, but by the time I checked the door, there was no one there. He was probably trying to do the similar thing that he had done to this couple, and with him staring out the door, he was more than likely mentally unwell. And while I hope he gets the help he needs, I also hope he doesn't do something potentially harmful to anyone else who ended up in the rooms next to him. This story takes place about five days ago. I'm still shaken up over it. I'm a 19-year-old female, and my parents and I packed up our U-Haul and made the long drive to our new home up north from our small and dinky apartments in Central Florida. I can't lie, I was very excited about this move. Attending college in the spring, finally getting to start my dream career. So many other things I couldn't or didn't get to do in Florida. On the first night of our drive, we stopped at a hotel in what appeared to be a shady area. It was kind of scary as it was set up right next to a closed down gas station with boards and graffiti written all over them. From my parents' experience and what I've seen on TV, these aren't the type of places you want to be lurking around in. My dad, who was usually very calm and collected, was on edge the whole night since the door to our room didn't close all the way. We had to prop one of the hotel chairs against it and use the deadbolt to have the slightest bit of comfort. I thought it couldn't get much worse than that, but I was so wrong. The second night, we stopped in a small town in North Carolina. We had our two cats with us, so we had to find a hotel that was pet friendly. We came across one of these hotels and booked a room for the night. While my parents were making sure that nothing shifted in the U-Haul, I sat in the passenger seat of my mom's car with my little buddy trying to calm him down. He seemed a little more agitated than normal. About an hour and a half after pulling into the parking lot, we grabbed the cats and our essentials. Emotions were running high, so we were all on edge of getting to our new home in the next day or two, depending on the amount of sleep we got. We loaded our things into a cart and approached the hotel's side door. My mom pulled out the key card, and it took a while for the door to finally unlock, but the second we heard it click, a woman started yelling at us. We looked up and saw her frantically running towards us. Her voice was frantic. The panic in her voice still sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it. She wore a long, dark blue jacket. Her hair was in a messy ponytail, and it was tucked inside her hoodie. She looked really tired, like she hadn't slept in a year, or she had gone through something horrible. She was panting, muttering the words, Call 911. Call 911. There's something wrong with my baby. There was no child with her, nor did we see any kids in sight. 
My initial thought that maybe the kid was near the front of the building and was seriously hurt, or there was a car accident and we were too busy unloading to hear the collision. The woman kept telling us to call 911, but my mom told her that she didn't have her phone on her. I always carry mine, and me being a kind-hearted person I try to be, I offered to call for her. But the moment I pulled up my phone, my dad snatched it out of my hand. The lady then said, It's really bad. You need to come see. My mom told her that we didn't want to see, and that she should go inside, so the lady could go to the front desk to get help. At first, she was screaming, No, no, I don't need their help, I need your help. But my mom kept insisting that they go inside. At this point, my little buddy was whining and clawing at his pet carrier, trying either to get out or to attack this lady. My boy might look like a sweet fuzzball, but if provoked, he's a scratching machine. The lady took one look at him and attempted to reach for him, saying, Yeah, yeah, let's get the babies inside. The way she said that was fucking creepy. This time, it sounded like she was on drugs or had bad intentions. I scooped my cat away before she could touch him, and we led her to the front desk, where she told the hotel worker the same story she told us. The hotel worker tried to calm her down, and while the lady was distracted, my parents and I walked towards the elevator and started to get inside. As I looked back at the lobby, I saw the woman staring at us, her eyes full of anger now. She then started charging at us, and before I even had a chance to react, my mom pushed me and my furry baby into the elevator, them standing in front to protect me. I could see the woman still running towards us as the elevator was closing. I remember the small screen near the elevator in the lobby showing which floor the elevator was heading to. So to stop this crazy lady from harassing us, we pushed all the floor buttons, and we just stopped on every floor. First the second, the third, the fourth, then the fifth. After the fifth floor, we pushed the button back to our original floor and quickly piled into our room. Silence. My heart was pounding the entire time. My body started shaking at what just happened. As I got that cat out of the carrier, I heard my mom and dad talking about the lady. My dad suspected that maybe she had a mental illness or was on drugs, whereas my mom thought she could be a trafficker with the way she was trying to get us to come with her to see the supposed situation. That's when my heart broke. I tried so hard to see good in people, but at the same time, I tried to keep the best distance I can. But this was the first time someone ever approached me. I was so gullible to almost believe her story. My guard had slipped. I tried to hold back my guilt and fear as best as I could, but I ended up breaking down. My mom hugged me, saying everything was going to be okay, but no matter how many times she said that, my body continued shaking and my paranoia lasted throughout the night. Even at the slightest creak, I would shoot up from the bed and look at the people thinking that the lady had found us. Luckily, she wasn't there. That night, we all decided that we were going to get up around sunrise and reach our home before nightfall. No more hotel stops, no more creepy people, and no more shady areas. As we checked out the next morning, the same employee from last night was there, and we asked her, what happened after we had got into the elevator? The worker told us after that, the crazy lady left in a huff, her hands clenched into a fist. But then the worker revealed a detail that my mind keeps going back to. When she turned to go after us, She saw a syringe in the crazy lady's jean pocket. I don't know if she already used it or is planning to use it on me and my family. It makes me wonder what the outcome would have been had my parents not been there and if I had given the lady my phone instead of offering to call for her. Would she have sold me into trafficking? Would she have robbed us while we were injected with whatever she was on? Anyway, we made it to her home two days ago. But the fear of that night still eats away at me. It goes to show no matter how panicked and frightened someone may sound or act, you truly don't know if they're in genuine trouble or if they have bad intentions after gaining a random stranger's trust. Please be careful out there, guys. I, unfortunately, had to learn it the hard way that not everyone in this world is a good person. I'm just happy to still be alive and safe. I hope I never see that crazy lady again.
While I was living and studying in the capital of my country, I had a small rented basement of a house built in 1917 next to a nightclub. I was preparing to go to sleep quite early since I had class at 8 a.m. the next day. Right before I fell asleep, I remembered that I forgot to lock the door. But since the city I lived in was generally quite safe, and the only way to get to the entrance of my place was past the front gate, all around to the other side of the house and down some stairs, I didn't think much of it and proceeded to fall asleep. Skip forward to the middle of the night. I wake up and feel something or someone slowly pulling my blanket off of me. In a confused state, I extend my hand and feel a hairy, male arm under my fingers. My first thought was, Oh, this is probably my drunk flatmate. But then I remembered that he was at his girlfriend's place on the other side of town. In pitch black, I jump out of my bed, rush to the light switch, and as I turn it on, I find a stranger around my age, standing in his underwear by my bed, with his underwear clearly wet from piss. My initial reaction was to stay calm since I had no idea if this dude was violent or what was even going on in the first place. I calmly ask him, Man, what the fuck are you doing here? He was clearly very confused as well and sat on the recliner I had in my tiny room. And there we were, both in our underwear, him covered in piss and I on the border of pissing myself. And what does he do? He extends his hand and introduces himself to me. At this point, I go, Okay, dude, get out of my house and start escorting him to the hallway where I find his clothes and shoes on the floor. As I'm escorting him out, he goes into the bathroom and locks himself inside. I hear him turn on the shower and I proceed to knock on the door saying, Hey man, if you don't leave right now, I'm calling the cops. To which he replies, I'm not afraid of the police. Well, that's just perfect, isn't it? A few minutes pass and he steps out of the bathroom butt naked with my flatmate's towel around his waist. Looks at me kind of content and says, Hey, did you see? They've got a shower in there. At this point, I am fuming. Who's got a shower, asshole? This is my house. You're a total stranger and you broke into my place. Suddenly, an expression of complete fear appears on his face. Oh my God. What have I done? Jesus Christ, he starts exclaiming as he's very awkwardly trying to get dressed in the hallway. Then I managed to get him out of my house. I even called one of my friends from my phone to pick him up at the club. Turns out he's from a completely other town and came to party at the Capitol. Got kicked out of the club for starting a fight and somehow managed to get into my place. To this day, I have no idea what he was on, how the hell he managed to find my apartment, as it's quite hidden from the street. Anyway, I apologize for a long post. I'm not even sure if this is the right place to post it, but I found it extremely creepy. Let's just say I'll never forget to lock my door from that day on. I didn't sleep well for weeks after. Oh, I should add that I actually found the dude on Facebook a while later. Turns out, we have a mutual friend. I'm a female. I was 13 at the time, but looked more like a 10 year old. My grandma lives two states away and discovered she had stage four cancer. My mom picked my sisters and I up and drove us there while my dad stayed at home for work. We were there for three months. My aunt and uncle lived in the same city as my grandma and me and my sister would frequently spend the night at one of my aunt's houses. One day, I was making lunch for my grandma when my uncle walked into the kitchen. He suddenly shouted and rushed out the back door. I caught a glimpse of a man in a red baseball hat running from the kitchen window. He had been watching me. My uncle claimed that he didn't catch him. We found two piles of cigarette butts in the backyard, one by the kitchen window and one by the bathroom window. Yeah, My grandma didn't have blinds or curtains on any of the windows besides her bedroom window. Needless to say, I was horrified. Fast forward a few days and my mom was certain who the peeping Tom was. 
my grandma's neighbor, who always wore a red baseball hat, and had suddenly became smoking buddies with my uncle. We couldn't prove anything because my uncle backed him up and we didn't want my grandma to be distressed, so we let it go. A couple days later, I was spending the night at one of my aunt's houses while my sister was at the other aunt's house. It was just my cousin and I there while my aunt was at the store. I heard a car door and peeked out the window to see if it was my aunt but I saw a man standing at the end of the empty driveway. He wore a red baseball hat, pulled over his eyes. My uncle had told him where I was. I freaked. I locked the doors and told my cousin to call her mom. She was on her way home, but the man was already gone. After that, I never left my mom's side. I stayed every night at my grandma's house. My dad flew up soon after. And that was the end of the incidents when my grandma's neighbor... There was now a man in the house, and if my dad left to go to the store or something, he took me with him. It's been 14 years, and many disturbing things have come to light. My uncle was a predator, and one of my sisters was one of his victims. My aunt knew and covered it up for him. The sister of mine, she's running the streets, using hard drugs to self-medicate, and her son was taken away from her. My parents are absolutely devastated, and the guilt eats away at my mom every day. So for some context, I'm a 26-year-old female, and I also currently live with a female roommate who hasn't been here a lot due to the fact that she's been staying with her boyfriend. We've only been living here for about six months, so a pretty good while, but not years. I feel safe in this house, but it all changed a few nights ago, when I was there alone. The doors were locked, thank God, but I was in the kitchen, and in the kitchen there's a window above our sink that looks into the back of our property, and there's just straight up woods in the back of our house, so we never bothered on getting a curtain for our kitchen window, because nothing was back there, it just hasn't seemed like a priority. So I'm in the kitchen making ramen on the stove which was right next to the sink, and I hear something outside the window. I look out there, and there's a man standing there looking at me. Obviously, he ran away, but I didn't know if he was trying to get in or what. I called the police, then my father. The police were nice, but because he was gone by the time they arrived, they couldn't do much. I have cameras for the sides in front of my house, and they told me to get one in the back and if he comes back to call them and they'll handle it. I'm not staying here anymore. I ordered a ring from Amazon, set it up, and I've been watching it while staying at my family's for a week. I don't know when I'll feel safe enough to return. I'm really scared. Hey everyone, I don't post much on Reddit, but I need to get out what just happened a few hours ago. This seemed like a place to put it. For some background first, I'm a 29 year old woman. I live in an apartment in a sketchier side of my town, so I'm not unaccustomed to strange people pulling up and strange things happening. I've been through a home break in, so I'm very hyper vigilant when it comes to keeping myself and my home safe. I also smoke cigarettes. Nasty habit, I know. But having cats and not wanting my house to reek like smoke, I walk out to my balcony to smoke. That's exactly what I was doing when this happened. I was sitting on my balcony, smoking, and just enjoying the night, when I noticed a car I've never seen before pull into the back parking lot of my apartments right by my balcony. I initially felt a bit off, but I didn't want to come off as being a paranoid neighbor So I keep sitting and smoking my cigarette. Then I hear footsteps making a beeline through my backyard. There's a large burly man that I've never seen before walking briskly through my backyard. Again, I still don't try to make much of it because they might be there for my neighbor. My anxiety was definitely on alert, but not in panic mode until I realized that he was going straight to the portion of my backyard. 
Then he does something that's still freaking me out as I type this. He stops right in my backyard and looks up at me on the balcony, not saying a word. Now I'm in absolute panic mode. I audibly say, oh fuck no. Spring up, slam and lock the balcony door, run to my upstairs bathroom and dial 911. I listen to every sound downstairs while I'm panicking in the bathroom and it truly sounded like someone was messing with my back door. I don't know for sure, but I was hyper vigilant. I don't know if he was in my backyard for a few minutes because I was in my bathroom for several minutes until I decided to peek out the balcony window. I saw him walking to his car and getting in. That also tells me that I don't think he was here to rob me, but something more sinister. Luckily, he was lazy because, again, I live on a cheaper side of town, so I can imagine the quality of my doors and locks. I'm really hoping that it was just some guy who was drunk or high and had the wrong house, but my gut is telling me otherwise. When I was a senior in college a few years ago, I lived in an old house about a five minute walk from campus with five girlfriends. It was still COVID times, so we spent a lot of time in the house since we really couldn't go elsewhere. To preface, this house was old and many of the windows didn't lock. Our landlord sucked, as many college ones do, and did nothing to fix this issue. But with it being six of us and often a boyfriend or two sleeping in the house, it felt mostly safe and most of us kept our windows open. Our college town is in a town just outside the second most dangerous city in the state, but right around the campus is relatively safe. When the weather started getting warmer in early spring, we would sit out on the roof to sunbathe and this roof faced the street. We would access the roof from my roommates, let's call her Mary, bedroom window on the second floor since it led straight to the roof. Our street was residential and didn't get much traffic, but we did have a couple encounters of younger guys catcalling us as I drove by, but nothing seemed sinister as we were college kids. One night, late in the semester, Mary went up to her room to call her brother while the rest of us were hanging out downstairs. That's when she rushed downstairs and said that she saw a ladder leading up to the roof where we would all sunbathe right near her window which was open. Later, we learned she said out loud to her brother what she saw before she came down. When she told us, many of the roommates and her boyfriend ran outside to find the man running away from the house with a freaking ladder, who we assumed heard Mary tell her brother she saw a ladder and knew he was caught. It was dark, so they couldn't make out anything about him. I immediately texted our landlord asking if he had came by to the house to do any work, and he said no. We called the police who came by. They did some investigating and patrolled around our house a couple nights, but we never found out who the man was, what his intentions were, or if he had done it before. So to the creep with the ladder, let's not meet. My mother worked long shifts at the airport seven days a week, so me, 12, female, and my younger sister, 10, were at home by ourselves a majority of the time. For reference, we lived in a house that had gates on the windows and a gated door that you had to unlock to get to the actual front door. It was late at night, around 10 p.m., and me and my sister were watching TV and preparing for bed. I noticed some sounds coming from the front door and realized it was someone banging on the gate. I was naive back then, and decided to open the door to see who it was. It was a young white man in his late 20s. He had on a black and white striped shirt with a jean jacket. I asked him what he needed, and he sat there with a blank face and calmly said that he needed me to let him in. I asked him why, and he repeated himself and said, let me in, I'm in trouble. He kept looking over his shoulder and I felt a bit unnerved and decided not to unlock the gate for him. 
As soon as I made the decision not to let him in, the police showed up and pulled out their guns. They gave him directions to walk backwards with his hands up, and at the moment, I decided now was a good time to close the door. I quickly realized that he may have been running from the police for a crime he committed. Till this day, I wonder what would have happened if I opened the door and let him in. Creepy. So about four years ago, I was living with an ex-boyfriend, we'll call him Useless Prick, and his aunt, Pill Popper Pam, and her boyfriend, Loser Len. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I had to pee. Useless Prick was asleep in the bed when I got up. I walked across the house, and Pill Popping Pam's door was open. She and Loser Len were both passed out. I made my way sleepily to the bathroom and saw the light was on. Since I knew everyone was asleep, I assumed one of them left the light on and opened the door. I was wrong. I saw multiple things in a few seconds. The first thing I remember is that it smelled like horrible shit and that someone had just taken a shower based on the steam. Secondly, there were clothes folded up into squares, organized on the ground. There was a man on the toilet. I, having manners and very much still half asleep, jumped and apologized and closed the door. I panicked and went to my room and tried to wake up useless prick, but he was, of course, useless. I texted Pill Popper Pam and said, Hey, there's a man in our bathroom. She texted back, I know, it's okay. He's a friend of mine. This calmed me down and I messaged back something like, Okay, thanks, just checking. And she said, no problem, go back to sleep. And I did. The next day, I bring it up when everyone is around. Pill Popper Pam said she never texted me. She was high on pills and passed out cold. And she would never allow a friend to come in like that. And it sounded like a homeless man who walked the street constantly. He had used her phone. I will add that her phone was plugged in and sitting on the ground about two feet away from the bedroom door next to their bed. When we talk about if he could have texted from it, she said that she didn't have a passcode on her phone. Years ago, when I was 11, I was staying home alone with my little brother, who was 7. At the time, it was about 9 p.m., dark and pouring rain. We were reading in our room, right next to the front door, with a big window and open blinds. That's when I hear the front doorbell ring, followed by knocking. I thought my parents had arrived. Strange though that they didn't use the garage or their keys. I looked outside to see if their car was there. Nothing but rain. As I approach the door, I hear a man's voice that was not my father's yell. Would you like some cookies? We're selling Girl Scout cookies. I'm shocked at this considering the weather and time of day. Saying nothing, I check the peephole and peer through the side window, only to see that it's not a father with a girl, as I expected. My heart dropped, standing there, was just a fully grown man in his late 50s, no box of cookies in sight, soaking on my doorstep. I can remember the gut-wrenching feeling of having to check the locks while he was right on the other side. For sure, he heard us. The two locks were the only thing separating myself and brother from a potential monster. He continued to knock and mention his cookies, as I considered calling the cops. That's when I remembered the blinds were open in my room where my brother was, with the light on. As I turned the corner into the doorway, I could see the man carefully peering into the window, possibly eyeing my brother, who was distracted by a book. My heart was pounding now as I began to panic. In a move that took all my willpower, I quickly turned off the lights and ran to the window to close the blinds in full view of the man as fast as I could. I double checked all the locks in the house, closed all the blinds and told my brother to hang out in one of the biggest closets in the interior of the house. I didn't tell him what was going on so he wouldn't be frightened and for some reason 
I never did call the cops or my parents. I just waited in the hallway until he left. Thinking about this still gives me shivers that so many things could have gone wrong that night. My worst fear sense is a stranger getting to the unlocked door before I do. My mom had left me and my brother home alone. It was midday. My brother was 12, maybe 13, so I would have been around 9 years old. I was watching him play Xbox in our living room. He had his headset on, talking to his friends. Then there was a knock on our front door, in our carport. I run and answer the door without looking. It's a grown man I'd never seen before. We are only separated by the screen door, which is unlocked all the time. He asked, are your parents home? Horror washes over me. First of all, he's knocking from a carport, which is strange in itself. A stranger would knock on the front door, and our carport is empty. We only had one car, and my mom had taken it. This man knows that my parents aren't home. I'm afraid, I don't know why, but I'm scared. Immediately, my brother in the other room comes to mind. I never had a father figure. My brother has always been the one who makes me feel safe. The strongest person in the whole world. Someone who can protect me in any situation. How most people regard their father, I think. I feel as though I can barely speak. Wide-eyed, I manage to stutter out. N no, but my big brother's here. Without even a moment's pause, the man reaches for the screen door and starts to open it. Like an act of God, divine intervention, an arm reaches out from behind me, over my shoulder, and grabs the door. My brother pushes past me, holding the door, forcing the man back, with his presence, out the carport, and he closes the door behind him. The man tells my brother he's looking to buy the shitty swing set that was in our front yard at the time. My brother comes back in without saying anything to me, puts on his headset, and continues playing. I sit down as well and continue watching him. I don't believe we ever told our mom. Luckily, we never encountered that person again, and it pretty much fades away in my memory. But as I got older, it became one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. Creepy, not so much of what happened, but what could have. Unnerving how absolutely oblivious we were. I like to think the man was planning to lock me in the room, rob the place, and leave. But people can be so evil. This occurred to my wife and I right before I left the Marines. After leaving the military, I was obsessed with jogging, hiking. I liked pushing myself to see how much weight I could carry and how far I could run and hike. Every Sunday morning at 5 a.m., my wife would drive me eight miles from our apartment. I would road march with a heavy pack through town back home. This particular Sunday was very warm. She dropped me off at the location. We said our goodbyes, and she returned to the apartment. It's not terribly dangerous where we live, but having done some combat deployments, I was always aware of my surroundings. Therefore, I was carrying my handgun that was typically located in our bedroom. When my wife returned to the apartment, she noticed that there was a little white Honda parked near the front of our unit, which was not there before. She thought it was odd because it was so early on a Sunday morning. She thought about not getting out of her car because she was a little creeped out. She decided to go in but walk quickly. She got back into bed and tried to get some sleep while I hiked home. Our apartment was a ground level unit and there was a large bush located in front of our window with gravel surrounding it. As she laid in bed, she heard some slight shifting of gravel. She lay there silently listening, then she heard heavy breathing, which she said sounded like it was someone with her lips right on our window. Due to the heat, our window was open but there was still a screen and large drapes. My wife lay there silently for several minutes while the breathing continued. I don't know what came over her, but she got ballsy. She jumped up out of bed and threw the drapes open. 
she saw a grown man standing there who immediately turned around the corner of the wall out of view. She didn't say anything to this man, but she could see a shadow from the light above the door to the unit next to ours. The man stood there, still breathing heavily. She described it as almost intentionally loud. In a flash, the man took off in a dead sprint for the white Honda. My wife said she had no idea what to do because she was so terrified that he would return. She knew I had the gun, so she grabbed the K-bar, the large military-style fixed blade knife that I kept underneath the mattress. She waited for about five minutes before running out of the house and getting into her car. She drove the route I had told her I would be taking and found me. I remember it so clearly because my wife's car pulled up and she was bawling and had the large knife in her hands. She explained everything. She drove me home. I called the police on the way. We arrived and the white Honda was gone. The police reported that they had received reports of suspicious activity happening recently in the early mornings. He was never caught to my knowledge. It creeps me out to this day that that someone is still out there, probably getting brazen every time he gets away with something. So this happened to our neighborhood when I was about 10. We lived in a super nice subdivision on the ridge near a marina. The houses were not right on top of each other due to how the land was and our house was one of those ones that was not right next to the other houses. Our house backed up to a lot of woods that I used to play in. Our neighborhood was plagued one year by a peeping tom. My mom had talked to some of the neighbors and several people had noticed a guy creeping about in backyards or looking through windows. One neighbor said that her and her husband had another couple over for dinner and when the ladies went out to the backyard down to the woodpile to get more firewood, they noticed a man standing just outside the woods staring at them. They ran to get their husbands, but he was gone at that point. So we were all on the lookout. One night, I was in bed, and my bed was opposite to the window in the room. Our house was mostly on ground level, but my bedroom window was higher up from the ground. However, there was a little ledge under the window. I used to use that ledge to climb in and out of my window for fun. I even put a slide under the window once and slid out of my window. So one night, I'm in bed, and I wake up for some reason. I look out the window, and the floodlights were on in the backyard. I clearly see an outline of a man's shoulder and head in the window, like he was standing on the ledge, just looking in. I scream and get my parents, and of course, by the time we get back, he's gone. My mom tended to believe me, but my dad said I just dreamt it. I made my dad search the entire huge house before I would go back to sleep. The reports came in from the neighbors that the boats down the marina were getting broken into. My guess is the peeping Tom was breaking into the boat for food or to sleep. Well, it all came to a head one night, and we were the family that got the worst of it. Our house was like one level and had a basement. Well, the master bedroom had these huge windows that went all the way to the ground. They could be opened and just have a screen. You just turn a handle and they open out. My parents were lax in security and would leave the dang windows open while they slept, if the weather was nice. So my dad was gone at night, which was not abnormal for him. He was gone at night a lot, which perhaps the peeping Tom knew if he had been watching us. My mom was asleep in her bed, which was right next to one of the big fold-out windows, which were open. She likes to sleep with the TV on. She said she kept hearing leaves crunching, and she thought it must have been something on the TV. Then she finally realized that sound was coming from outside the window, literally a foot and a half away. She jumped out of bed and ran to turn on the floodlights, and there in front of the window was the outline of a man. Literally, all that the guy had to do was kick the screen in and step down into the house. It was that simple. We had an alarm system, so my mom runs to hit the panic button, and the alarm goes off. 
She said the guy bolted. I was asleep in my bed while it was going on and wake up to hear the alarm and the cops arriving shortly after. The cops were too lazy to go into the woods to look for him and he had ran into the woods behind our house. They did take an unmarked car and drive it around to the other side of the woods to see if they could catch him when he came out the other side, but of course they never found him. But maybe almost getting caught was enough for him to stop because after that night the peeping Tom was never seen again in our neighborhood. I suppose he moved on, but not before he literally scared the living daylights out of my mother and me. The lesson of this incident has taught me to never sleep with my windows open, ever. I'm a 33-year-old female. I went to a convention with two female friends and stayed in the downtown area hotel near the convention center. Caddy corner from our hotel was a chain drugstore. It was still light outside and we decided to get some snacks to eat while we were watching Netflix that night. While my friends were looking for candy, I stood back because I wanted some chips and noticed a man next to them. He wasn't looking at the candy, he was watching them. They hadn't noticed, so when they picked their candy, I whispered them to follow me. I picked up the pace, turned quickly down the middle, and down an aisle. I told them there's a creepy guy there, and to stay together. That's when I noticed he's on the other end of the aisle. We kept taking turns down the various aisles, and he's following us, but walking where he's between us and the exit. At this time, we're basically trapped in the back of the store near the pharmacy. The line for the pharmacy was long, but it was full of men. So we got in line and started talking to the men in front of us, hoping that would scare off our stalker. We could still see him in the big globe mirror, one aisle down waiting for us. We waited in that line for 30 minutes to ask for security. The security swept the pharmacy and the stalker guy had left. We were extra thankful when the security guard offered to walk us back to the front of our hotel. I don't know what the intentions that guy had for us, but I'm glad I'll never find out. This happened when I was about 12 or 13 and I had went back to look at the books on the other side of the store by myself while my parents were shopping. When I was there, I noticed this guy that was about five feet away from me. I didn't really pay much attention to him and just went to the other side of the shelf. But then he also went to the other side when I did. I was a little uncomfortable, but I thought it was just a coincidence. So I went back to the other side. Again, when I went to the other side, so did he. He started getting closer and closer to me, making me a little more freaked out and he still followed me every time I would go to the other side. At this point, we're just circling the shelves, so when he was still walking to the other side, I went to the DVD section that was next to the shelf. I saw him look around, and then a woman, who I assumed was his wife, appeared next to him, and he whispered something to her, and they both started looking around. I was kind of shaking because I knew that they were looking for me. Fortunately, my parents came just in time, and when we were leaving, I saw them again, glaring at me. This happened two days ago. I'm a 22-year-old female. I live in an apartment in a large downtown area right next to my university. So I was pulling into the parking lot of the CVS near my apartment, and I noticed a woman standing at one of the other cars near mine, talking to a man inside. When I got out, they started walking in, and the woman tried to flag me down and talk to me. I just ignored her and walked into the store. The man who was in the car got out and followed me in. He followed me through several aisles before stopping me to ask if I wanted to be on his OnlyFans and make porn videos for him. I told him that I wasn't interested multiple times, but he continues to ask me questions about myself, my name, where I work, live, and if I have an OnlyFans. He started to describe sexual acts he wanted to do with me for his OF. I was so scared in the moment and wasn't sure what else to do. 
But eventually, after I turned down his offer enough times, he walked away and left the store without buying anything. What was really weird is that he was wearing an obviously fake lab coat and said he was in town for a pharmacist convention. I don't know. When I got to the register to check out, I noticed an employee looking out the window and one of them told the other to call the police if they saw that woman again. When I got to my car, the man was still sitting in his car right next to mine. Luckily, I don't think he was able to follow me out due to the busy area I was in. In retrospect, I think this guy might have been a human trafficker looking for easy targets. I just hope no one else was bothered by him and decided to go anywhere with him. Stay vigilant, ladies. Edit. I did make a report to my local police in case anyone else had an encounter with this guy. Also, I do carry mace. So this happened about a year ago, and I still don't return to the store without my husband. So last July, I took my then four and six year old sons to Target to shop for back to school. Since having kids and hearing all these horror stories, I'm very observant of my surroundings when I'm out. Anyways, while in Target, like most women, I looked through all the sections. When in the women's clothing, I noticed two older men close by that kept looking over our way. I thought maybe I was just being paranoid, so I kept going on with my business, but keeping my boys super close. We go to the baby section, then pop-ups, toys, makeup, and the same thing. I was really feeling uneasy because they seemed to be everywhere we were, and they never had a car. One guy was holding one little thing. I go to check out and wait for a big group of nurses leaving Starbucks to walk out with. I threw my boys in the car without buckling them and locked the doors. As soon as I look up, the two guys walk out empty-handed, looking around. I didn't think they saw me, so I started to leave. When I look in the rearview mirror and saw them behind me in a truck, I stopped right there, turned around and took a photo of them, making sure that they could see me. They turn like they're going back to the store and park a couple stores down where they can no longer see me. And I call the cops. While on the phone with them in a full-blown panic attack, I watch one of the guys change his shirt and go back inside. I waited until the police got there so I could make sure that they got and had the right guys. I don't know what their plan was for that day, but my mama gut told me that it wasn't anything good. I'm so thankful that my babies and I are okay. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying I'm posting this just because I want to vent about what happened yesterday because I'm still freaked out. So this all started because my mom needed a few things from Walmart and I was going there anyways. So I decided to save her the trouble and get them for her. I get what I need and check out. I walk outside and realize I parked on the other side of the store. So I started walking. I had this uneasy feeling, but I pushed it away by saying it was just my social anxiety kicking in. So I get to the wrong parked in, and I'm closing in on my car when I notice these two guys walking behind me. I thought nothing of it because Walmart was packed when I went in. So I just ignored them until I realized that they weren't stopping. They were following me all the way back to my car. To put it in perspective, I parked on the way end, away from everyone else, so I wouldn't get my car door smacked in. They stopped a few feet from my spot beside me and watched me get in my car. They had to be about late 20s, early 30s. They stood there for a minute, but walked away when they saw me pull my phone out. I called my dad, shaking and explaining everything to him. He stayed on the phone with me until I calmed down enough to drive home. You might be saying, well, that's not that bad, but it gets worse. I'm still on the phone with my dad, trying to calm down when I noticed they came back, but this time they're in their car. They slowly drove by my car and the one in the passenger seat looks at me with a creepy smile 
and waves at me in a flirty way, and then they drove away. Let's just say I didn't leave that parking lot for a long time. Side note, I was so shaken up, I forgot to pay attention to the road and almost crashed into a car that was speeding in the parking lot. Also, I know the men knew I was only 16 to 18 years old because I have a school parking lot pass on my rearview mirror. I was about 12. Me and my mom had gone to town 45 minutes out to do some shopping with some of her friends. I had a corn snake at the time, so I asked her if I could walk around the pet store one door down from the mini supermarket she was shopping in to compare prices of frozen mice with our local seller. She said sure, just to be back as soon as I was done. The pet store had been there as long as I can remember. It had a very warehouse feel about it and was poorly lit by dim fluorescent lights too far above the ground. Before checking out the mice, I just wanted to check around the rest of the store, being the curious 12 year old I was. As I was roaming the aisles, I noticed him. He was in every aisle I strolled down, bald middle age, a bit tubby, wearing dark plumber overalls over a white shirt. It was summer and it was hot. I remember thinking why on earth would you come into a non-air conditioning building like that? He carried a basket, but there's nothing in it. He slowly stalked me down the aisles. I noticed his basket wasn't getting any fuller. I started walking faster, taking random turns down different aisles to see if I was just being paranoid, but he was always 10 to 15 feet behind me. At some point, I finally thought I lost him. I power walked out of the pet store and as soon as I cleared the doors I sprinted down the street to the mini supermarket that my mom was in. She hadn't even made it down the second aisle completely. I caught up to her, immediately stripped off my bright pink hoodie and slung it in the cart as well as ripped out the hair ties in my hair. I was smart for doing that because when I looked back at the door he was standing there, still carrying the basket from the pet store and scanned in the store for any sight of a 12 year old girl in a bright pink hoodie and ponytail. When we left, I saw you in your van as you drove away, a plain white van, like something out of a true crime documentary or horror film. I think about him sometimes and how if you would have caught me before I got to the supermarket on a quiet Wednesday afternoon, what horrors could have been waiting for me in the back of his van guy in overalls who followed me out of the pet store without putting down his basket. Even after 10 years, let's not ever meet again. This happened almost 10 years ago when I was 18. I wanted to go pick up some groceries at our local Walmart. It was around 11 at night and I just got off work. I usually have no problem going anywhere by myself. But on this night, my inner self was telling me to invite a friend to tag along. I am roughly 5 feet tall, female, 105 pounds, but I don't get spooked too easily and always carry pepper spray with me. Anyways, back to the story. I call my friend and ask if she'll accompany me and I go to pick her up. We walk into the produce side of Walmart and almost right away I notice this man staring at us very intently. He was around 5'5", kind of heavy, had a Hawaiian shirt on, and looked of Hawaiian descent. So we're over by the fresh produce, and I'm keeping an eye on him as he pretends to be looking at bread, but clearly keeps putting things back. I turn my back for a second to grab something. Then I hear a man's voice ask, Hey, do you guys know of anywhere I can get food this late? For more background information, I live in a city of about 50,000 people. Right across from this Walmart was Applebee's, which stays open rather late, a McDonald's a quarter mile up the road, and other various places to get food. Plus, we're in the middle of Walmart, duh. So I don't beat around the bush and flatly tell him that there's a couple restaurants around where we were. He then asked, Well, what's fun to do around here? It's late at night, so nothing really to do except maybe go to Applebee's or a local bar. I tell him Applebee's is open, and we have bars downtown, 
but that's all I'm aware of. He proceeds to ask what we're doing when we leave. And I tell him we have to leave now. He apologizes and said he didn't mean to be creepy. We walk away and are looking in the frozen aisle when I spot him on the opposite side walking by. I tell my friend I've had a bad feeling about him since we walked in and wanted to test out if he was following us. We walked a few aisles and sure enough, he was on the other end nonchalantly walking by pretending not to see us. I backtrack a couple aisles to get something and he walks up pretending to look at things. I finally ask him if I can help him with something. I think this threw him off guard by being so direct because he stutters and asks what aisle the milk is on or something. I tell him and we leave to check out. Well, wouldn't you know it, he's in the checkout right next to us with a pack of gum, no milk, or whatever else he was looking at. He finishes first and watches us leave the store. Me thinking he's gone by now tells my friend, let's just run to the car. So we run out to the car look around to make sure we didn't see him. Now, here's the real creepy part. As I'm leaving the parking lot, we see him sitting on the trunk of his car, watching people leave Walmart. I drove by to get his license plate number. He sees us and rushes into his car. I sped off as quickly as I could, so he can't see where I went. I then called the cops and tell them about what just happened and relayed the license plate number to them. So creepy Hawaiian shirt guy who was supposedly looking for places to eat while in the middle of Walmart, please let's never meet again. I was in Walmart earlier this evening with my two daughters, one elementary school aged and the other middle school. We looked around for school supplies for a minute and then rounded the corner to see the Halloween candy on display As we turned the corner, a slightly older guy came really close to us, like he was in a hurry and almost hit our cart. He didn't have a car or any items. I said, oh, excuse me, and then stopped in front of the candy to let my youngest ask a bunch of questions about the candy pumpkins. The man stopped quickly and started rummaging around the candies right next to my daughter. He was listening to our conversation and reacted strangely when my daughter said that she wanted to take a picture of the candy. He was twitchy and caught my eye and looked away quickly. We moved on to the women's PJ section to look around for a few minutes and I noticed the same man pass by really close again. He was turning to the right towards the shoes with a big bag of candy cradled in his arms. My girls went across the aisle to the boys' clothing section while I finished deciding. And when I was catching up to them a couple minutes later, the guy was wandering through the boys' clothes towards my daughter. He paused and looked confused, but still like he was in a rush, and watched me discuss sizes with my youngest. This is when I started thinking something was off with this dude. I mentioned him to my older daughter, and then we moved through the partition into the girls' clothes. I didn't see him again for a few minutes and figured it was nothing, but then he came into the section and was acting like he was trying to pick out a justice shirt. He still had the big bag of candy that he kept adjusting his grip on. I kept seeing him take quick peeks at my girls, but every time he saw me watching him, he pretended to be occupied in his shopping. I told my oldest I thought he was following us and she said that she noticed the same thing. I made my youngest get in the cart so I could keep them both close. They both tend to wander a bit. The guy then walked out of the girl section, passing close behind me, but he looped around the partition back into the boy section and stopped at the opening on the other side, but still straight in the line of sight. He caught my eye again and twitched, then pulled out his phone, texted something, and walked away. By this time, I was on high alert and possibly quite paranoid. I looked around and saw two slightly older men standing around. One was in electronics, kind of looking at a half-empty display of something. But I swear he glanced at me several times, even though there were three or four racks of clothes and a hallway with occasional people in between. The third guy had wandered into the girls' section and was apparently considering buying a justice shirt too. 
Every time he saw me notice him watching us, he would wander down to the baby aisles, but keep coming back after a couple minutes. I realize now, looking back, that if I suspected something bad, I should have just gotten my girls out of there. Close shopping for a picky preteen isn't fun, and I wanted to get it done and over with. On top of that, I kept second guessing myself that the other two guys were just a coincidence. I kept my girls really close to me after we moved to the woman's section, and I didn't see any of them again, and I stopped feeling creeped out, like we were being watched. Now, it's the middle of the night, and I'm pretty freaked out wondering what could have happened if I didn't notice the first guy, and continue to let my girls wander around. Should I report anything? I can't really imagine anything would be done just because I noticed some guy watching my daughters in Walmart. So a couple days ago, I was headed into the grocery store and waited for a car to pass so I could cross. While he was driving very slowly, I saw he had a digital camera in his hand and he snapped a picture of me. The flash went off. The windows were down and everything, like he's fully prepared to do this and he's probably done it many times before. I very audibly said, what the fuck? And by the time I realized what had just happened, he had driven away. It sufficiently freaked me out to the point where I asked all my female friends if they've ever experienced anything like that before. Of course, all of them had a different but equally creepy encounter with a man. Because, why wouldn't they? I feel like a lot of women are constantly put into uncomfortable situations because a lot of men just can't act like women are actual human beings. I'll be staying away from that store for a while. Maybe not creepy, I don't know. I'm a 23-year-old female. A few years ago when I was 18, I was going grocery shopping. As I was walking down the aisles, I noticed this older guy, maybe in his late 50s, early 60s, who seemed to be following me. Every aisle I went down, he was at the other end staring at me. I'm a bit paranoid because I'm 5'3 and 95 pounds and know that I would have a hard time fighting someone off if I needed to. I kept my eye on him, and when I went to check out, he was right behind me. I stupidly at the time didn't ask someone to walk me out to my car because I carry tons of self-defense stuff like pepper spray, screamers, window breakers, and seatbelt cutters. I was meek and didn't want to bother the busy workers. I booked it to my car and saw him following me. I locked my doors and sped out of the parking lot. I'm thankful I checked my back mirrors because he was still following me. At this point, I kept circling the same block over and over. After like five minutes of doing this, he finally got the point that I was onto him and would keep circling the blocks until he stopped. He drove away. I circled a few more times and then just drove to my friend's house because I was scared that he was still out there and would find out where I lived. What's also scary is a similar thing happened the next time I was shopping. It wasn't the same guy, but it was still just unnerving. I told my mom and she gave me the rules of having someone walk me to my car and if someone's following me, to pull into a police station. I usually don't bother to post anything on Reddit, but I figured typing out this situation might make me feel better. So I am 23 years old, female, and live on my own. I just moved out to this area for school and went to my local Walmart to gather supplies for cleaning. As I walked in, I take note of an older man near the entrance that I briefly made eye contact with and nodded at and just kept walking. I was looking at folders for a bit and then made my way back towards the electronic section at the back of the store to look for a charger. I was making my way through the aisles on the way down looking at the fall decorations Lots of them were geared towards kids, so I just glanced at them quickly and turned around to leave. The same man was there and was holding and inspecting some paper plates with childish Halloween designs on them for kids. I didn't even hear him walking to the aisle. I thought that was a little strange but brushed it off, thinking he had grandkids. 
I left and made my way into the electronics section where they kept the chargers behind locked glass doors. I'm there for about seven minutes and the same man shows up and I see the reflection of him in the glass that he's checking out my ass as he walks by. At this point, I was pretty far away from where I last saw him. I brushed it off because I'm used to men making quick glances like that in public and left it at that. He was looking at the display behind me at the other side. Goes and leaves and then this is where it gets creepy. He stands right behind me and starts aggressively eyeing me up and down while licking his lips, paying particular attention to my backside and my legs. He's basically undressing me with his eyes. At that point, he was giving off massive creep vibes and I started shaking with adrenaline. I was alone in the aisle with him. I was afraid that he would try to grab me. I stayed calm, despite my throat feeling like I had a ball in it, and waited for him to leave. He does. Then I go down a random aisle near the electronics, but in the general part of the store, and waited there for a few minutes standing there to see if he would show up. I noticed that there were two men behind the electronics counter and wanted to stay near them if anything went wrong. I wanted to confirm if he was following me or not. Sure enough, five minutes later there he was. I caught him quite literally speed walking down the main walkway, looking down each aisle as if frantically looking for me. He stopped dead, saw me notice him, and then promptly scurried off. I went back into the electronics section and informed them that I was being followed and was not comfortable and asked if there was security. They didn't have any, just theft prevention, and offered to check me out there or accompany me to finish shopping. They were very kind and I took them up on their offer to get my cleaning supplies nearby. As we turned together, the same guy was standing further away staring. He literally just increased the radius he was using to follow me and watching me from the front of the registers now. I get my stuff, check out, and then weave all through the clothing section to leave at a different section than the one I originally entered from and originally saw him. I didn't see him the whole time I did this, got to my car. I promptly drove to my new place, but stopped halfway in a random neighborhood. I pulled over and pretended that it was my house to see if anyone was following me. I did not want this guy finding out where I lived. I drove home when I didn't see anyone. I may be overreacting, but this is a new area to me and I've never had someone be quite that creepy and persistent in following me. I've done things on my own plenty of times and never had an issue. This all happened in the middle of the day at like 3 p.m. I was wearing loose clothes and just wanted to make a quick trip in and out. I have no idea what could have happened if I didn't notice or what his intentions might have been. I can't imagine that they were good. Maybe he would have followed me to my new place. Who knows? Either way, this whole encounter was scary. He had no clue I saw his reflection and the nasty expression on his face. Just stay aware, guys, and watch yourself. Two years ago, I lived near a big city while taking care of my great-grandma. One day, me and my mom decided to get some groceries, but we did not have a car so we had to walk. We were almost there when I heard my first name being shouted. I ignored it at first, thinking I was hearing things. But then this random lady that looked pretty disheveled and scared ran up to me grabbing my arm and kept repeating my name. My name is not a common name and everyone I know calls me by a completely unrelated name. So there's no way that she overheard someone else saying it. She looked so frightened and I'll never be able to get her face out of my mind. She was holding onto my arms with a really tight grip and I remember being surprised because she was very skinny and frail looking. Her grip left bruises on my arms for a while. My mom ended up grabbing my arm and dragging me away. She was freaked out too but didn't say anything. She just kept praying. When I got home she prayed a lot and blessed me. I was not scared of the lady, just more confused. How did she know my name? Why did she look so scared?
This story is something I think about from time to time, and it creeps me out. So I'm writing this to get off my chest. So anyways, let's begin. Two, almost three years ago, I was 17 years old. At this point, I was accustomed to being in horrible situations, as all I had was my mother, and she could never hold down a job for long. She had her own issues to tackle, so as I grew up, we stayed in and out of roommates' houses. We never really had our own place to stay, except twice, but that didn't last long either. We would be forced into a new environment with a snap of a finger. So when I was 17, we were led into a situation where we are going to be homeless again. I was used to it at this point, as I slept on the streets more than I'd like. The day comes when we have to leave our roommate's house, and my mom is able to stay in her boyfriend's trailer. I know where to go, as I have no friends at this point, as I've halted friendships because they are bad for my health and mental state, and overall, we're toxic. My mom offered me to go with her, but I didn't want to, as it felt like getting in between my mom and her boyfriend. Also, her boyfriend was weird. Plus, I'm used to being on the street, and I didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was this time. So here we are. I get dropped off at McDonald's and eat some burgers before I go to sleep in the streets once more. Eventually, the sun fled and the darkness was all that remained, so I looked for a place to sleep for the night. I went into many places that night, trying to find a place to sleep, but none of them were working. It was either too hot, or the lights were too bright, and mosquitoes were biting me. That's when I remember this house I used to go chill in. This house was under construction and nearly finished, so the doors and windows were all settled, so there would be no mosquitoes. I go through the back like always, and make my way upstairs. Eventually, I settle in the bathroom because there was less debris on the floor. So I lay there, and I try to sleep. Eventually, I hear some sounds downstairs, but don't think anything of it. I figured it was the door that I came through, swinging open and closed, or something. Eventually, after laying there for maybe an hour, I open my phone, and I look at old photos of my life, thinking about how messed up it was that I got to this point, and how I lost everything. The noises were still happening the entire time, but I paid no mind to it. Eventually, for whatever reason, I get up and go sit down on the back porch, probably because I couldn't sleep. I make my way downstairs and out the back door to the porch. I'm messing around on my phone for maybe five minutes when it happens. I see movement to my left from the back door that I just exited from. I glance over, and time itself freezes. At first, I thought it was an illusion, but I was in fact wrong. I see a man shrouded in the darkness, peering past the wall inside, to gaze at me. His lower half of his figure was behind the wall entirely, and I could not see anything but his upper half of his body. The rest of his body was leaning to the left, peeking behind the wall, almost like the man was trying not to be seen. Keeping half his body behind the wall, almost like this man was trying not to let me see his full body, as it would make his presence known. The man was a pure black silhouette, and I couldn't make out any features. After noticing him, I just sat there and stared at him for what seemed like forever, but was probably just a minute or two. I expected him to come outside and talk to me, because I normally talk to a lot of homeless people, and thought the man was just homeless. He didn't come outside, though. He had not moved at all, actually. He was still as a statue, Quiet as a mouse. Maybe if I hadn't noticed him, he would have stared at me the entire time. I eventually, after staring at him, got up and got on my bicycle and made my way out of the property. As I'm walking out of the backyard, I peer into the window next to the door that I saw the man in. The moonlight revealed the man was still there, only now watching me walk out of the property. I could tell because the moonlight revealed the top of the man's head and I saw his left eye gazing at me. He was a white male, who was very tall and had a jacket on of some kind. I could not make out many details, because he was cloaked in darkness. After seeing this, I just moved faster to get out of there. I got in the front of the house of the street and looked inside to see if I could see him. 
I couldn't. I got on my bicycle and waved goodbye to the house because I figured the man was still watching me. Then I drove away. For the rest of the night, I could not sleep. I tried two different spots, but both were no luck. This is where the story ends. I know I didn't have a crazy chase or a fight to the death or anything, but this was real life and it's not the same as movies or books. I don't know what the man was doing in there. I assume he was trying to sleep like I was, but the way he was staring at me was very unnerving. It makes me wonder how long that man was in the house and what would have happened if I actually fell asleep in that house. Would he have stared at me while I was sleeping, completely blinded to his presence, or did he have other intentions? I will never know, but now I don't go into houses like that anymore. So to the man shrouded in the darkness, let's not meet again. I'm a solo traveler, so I've had some weird experiences, but the creepiest one is probably this one. I was backpacking in the Balkans, and as I wanted my trip to last long, but didn't have that much money, I had to sacrifice comfort a lot of times, like hostels, cheap food, questionable public transport. This was the reason why I booked a midnight trail in Greece from Thessaloniki to Athens. During my stay in Thessaloniki, I mainly stayed in the center and the Bay Area, which looked nice. Just like any other big European city, however the train station was in a different area. I had to check out on my hostel in the morning, so I spent the whole day in the city and the afternoon in the sketchy area where the train station was because I wanted to stay close to it so I could get there in a reasonable amount of time in the afternoon and spend the night there so I wouldn't have to walk around in that area at 11 p.m. That part of the city looked a lot less appealing. It was full of garbage, graffiti, homeless people, and sketchy, creepy people. The train station wasn't that much better. It had a semi-closed-in coffee shop. I stayed there as long as I could but it closed at 8 p.m. While I was sitting in that coffee shop, looking down at my phone, I snapped my head around when I heard a loud noise. A guy dressed as a soldier rushed into the coffee shop and he was looking around like he was looking for someone or something. The coffee shop was really small. It had maybe like five or six tables and there was only one guest besides me. He saw me for sure, but didn't do anything. He went to the counter to order. He was speaking rather loudly, even though it was relatively quiet there. I found it weird, but I didn't think much of it, especially because he was speaking in Greek, which I didn't understand. The coffee shop closed at 8 p.m., so I packed up my bags and went outside. There were a lot of weird people loitering there. They didn't look like they were waiting for a train. I say this because I wanted to take a look at the tracks in advance so I would know how to get to my train in time. And when I was doing that, a train came to the station and all the people in the waiting room ran to the train, but they weren't getting on it nor greeting someone who got off. They were just walking up and down the track until the train set off. Also, they were all middle-aged men. There weren't any women or children among them. I went to the waiting area and sat down on a bench. I was a bit nervous, so I plugged in my headphones and was browsing something on my phone. However, I wanted to still be able to hear things around me, so I wasn't listening to music or anything, which I'm glad I didn't because not too long after I sat down, I heard someone next to me saying, nice tattoo, is it from Up? I knew they said it to me because I have a tattoo of the movie Up on my forearm, so I pulled out my earphones and looked next to me. There was a soldier from before sitting next to me, It was weird that he started talking to me in English automatically, but I do have a little Hungarian flag on my backpack, which indicates that I'm not Greek. I replied to his question, and we started talking. The conversation at first was pretty normal. We were talking about tattoos and movies and traveling. When I mentioned I wanted to visit Macedonia in this trip, he got a little political and heated. He started talking about Greek politics and the relationship between Greece and Macedonia very angrily. Throughout the entire conversation, he was acting a bit weird. 
I can't explain why, but it looked like something was off about him. At first, I was relieved that I was next to the soldier in this sketchy place, but after a while, I started questioning if he was really a soldier, or just pretending to be one. Because he was creepy, and he was consistently checking his bag, but just from the outside, it looked like there was a long object in there that could have been a gun, but if he really was a military person, that could be normal. I don't know Greek laws, if they're allowed to carry their weapons off duty or not. He asked me if I was traveling alone, and for how long I planned to stay in Athens. I answered him with honesty. I told him I was alone, and didn't plan to stay for long, as I was planning on catching a ferry from there. He asked me if I would like to stay in his place for free, but I declined. He asked me a few more times, but I said no every time. Then the speakers turned on and they announced that the train to Athens would be there soon. So we both got up and started to head to the tracks. He said he needs to get his luggage from the luggage storage, so we stopped there. It was right next to the steps to the train tracks. He took out a big, old heavy suitcase and it looked like he was even suffering from the weight. Then he really loudly slammed the storage metal door. I don't know why he did this. It was unnecessarily loud and everyone started looking at us. It was so loud that the whole station could hear it. We then started walking up the stairs but he stopped and said that he needed to use the restroom and asked me to wait for him there with his suitcase. He didn't even wait for my answer. He ran back to the waiting room. It was really odd. Why would he trust a stranger with his luggage and leave it with me? I stood there for a few minutes and was waiting for him but I started contemplating if I should just leave his suitcase there because I was afraid that I would miss my train. I even thought that maybe there was a bomb inside of the suitcase. Otherwise, why else would he leave his belongings with some random girl he just met? The fact that he was acting really strange didn't help with it either. I waited a few minutes, then he showed up. He asked me once again if I wanted to stay in his place in Athens, but again, I said no. We got up to the tracks and our train came in. He insisted on us sitting next to each other, but I didn't want to sit next to him, so I said I had a seat reservation, which was true, and that I was really tired and probably was just going to sleep the night anyways. He said he'll ask the person working on the train if I can switch seats with the reservation. He left his luggage next to me once again and went to the nearest employee. This time I didn't stay there. I got up the train and looked for my seat. Fortunately, there were a lot of people, so I blended in easily. I took my seat, and a few minutes later, a normal-looking man sat next to me. Thankfully, the soldier didn't come looking for me, and I never saw him again, not even in the Athens train station. There were even more people there. I know this situation wasn't too extreme, but it still bugs me to this day on what his intentions were. Was he really a soldier and a nice guy? Just a bit weird? With some kind of mental illness? Or a crazy psychopath pretending to be a soldier to look more trustworthy? When my dad first told me this story as a kid, it gave me chills. And since I stumbled onto the sub, I might as well share. I still remember every detail. Before going into details, I'll give some context to set the setting and background of the incident. Bear with me, they totally add up to the scary element of the story. Back in 1985, my 19-year-old dad was serving in the Greek Army Special Forces in the Paratrooper Division. Army service in Greece is mandatory for every male that reached their 18th birthday, and so everyone has to go. Military camps, where each company is stationed at, are mostly positioned in the countryside, and usually there isn't much going on near or around the camp. They are fairly secluded. Closest town to my pop's camp was three kilometers away. One night while serving, it was my dad's turn to go on guard duty in the camp he was posted in. Every night, five or six soldiers were selected to go on guard duty, and they slept in the same barracks. Half an hour before it was timed for the previous guards to be relieved, another soldier would come into the room and wake up the new batch so they would be ready to go to their positions. Each shift was two hours. 
the 12 to 6 a.m. shifts were the worst, according to my pops. It's extremely cold in the winter, and you're half asleep, standing beside your booth, freezing your butt off while keeping watch. The only way to keep vigilant and keep warm is to take a few steps up and down. So it was 2 a.m. and my dad was standing next to his booth with his M1 rifle. Absolute silence. He could only hear the wind. He mentioned that the moon was helpful with visibility, but there's only so much you can make out at night, even with a moon, apart from dark shadows, especially at longer distances. There were some tree lines far away, but there wasn't much vegetation around the camp at all. It was more like a clearing. Everything is going well, like every other night, until a tall, dark mass appears in the path coming out of the tree line and is headed right towards my father's booth. My dad's heart starts pumping when he spots it and said he was scared shitless at this point. The mass moves slow but steady and is closing the distance, almost like it's floating with big, slow steps. My dad does what he's instructed to do and what every guard does in a situation like this, raises his rifle, aims, and screams, Halt! Identify yourself! No reply. The shadow continues to approach. Second time. Halt. Identify yourself. Nothing. He told me at this point he was certain that he was seeing a ghost in real life. He says he thought to himself, let's see if a ghost can die. Before he engages, he screams the code word that raises the alarm. The way it works is the next guard in the next booth that's 100 meters away will hear the scream, then scream himself, And with a chain reaction like that, the alarm goes off from booth to booth and reaches patrol. The patrol is the officer with five soldiers that make their rounds between the booths every night and make sure everything is okay with the guards. If you're caught sleeping or away from your post by these guys, RIP. There are also ones to investigate an alarm. Only problem is patrol might take a while to get to the booth that raises the alarm as they don't know which one it is and then might be far from the right one. They run double time through every booth until they locate the original source of alarm. My dad hears the other guy screaming, and he knows the alarm has been raised. He knows that patrol is going to be there in a few minutes. He also knows that the penalty of falsely raising an alarm is prison. Prison means the soldier gets X amount of days added to their service. The service back then was two years plus prison days that have been added to the soldier along the way from penalties. They don't actually lock you up in cells unless you've committed an actual crime. Then the military police come in. But he doesn't have minutes. The eerie figure is 50 meters away and closing. He's ready to fire. Then he hears, Relax. Followed by my dad's last name. It's me. Another soldier covered in a black blanket that knew my dad was trying to sneak back into camp at night after having fun in the nearest town without permission. He was holding a bottle of liquor, too, and was fairly drunk. My dad let him through, but he knew he was about to get a serious amount of prison time for falsely raising an alarm. Once patrol figured out it was his booth that the alarm was raised from, the patrol gets there. My dad doesn't snitch on the drunk guy. The officer tells him they'll see each other the next morning. Next day in line, where the penalties are being announced by the officers, my dad is waiting to hear his name called, but they never mentioned him. Even though an alarm raise is extremely rare to happen, no one tells him anything. Turns out the patrol officer and the ghost were buddies. The guy sneaking in told the lieutenant what happened, and not to mention my dad. The officer apparently pulled some strings, and the whole incident was like it never happened. Happy end after all. Hope you enjoyed. I'm a 33 year old male. I used to hang out with my cousin a lot. We were both 10 at the time of this encounter and it has stayed with me ever since. We'd mostly spend our youth roaming the streets, not causing trouble, but kicking footballs around the field, climbing, hanging out with other kids our age, The typical stuff before iPads and Netflix became commonplace. 
One day, we decided to go explore a part of town that we never explored before. It meant going through alleyways and back streets. The trail would actually end about three minutes from my house, which was a safe part of the neighborhood. It was a sunny day, albeit not too warm, and my cousin and I had been walking for what seemed like miles. The journey we planned was supposed to go for longer, but we got bored and decided to take a detour home. This detour involved cutting through alleyways that looked a little bit like a coronation street. To the left of us were terrace house, and to the right of us, steel fences with sharp points to deter would-be thieves. We continued up there. And soon enough, one of the kids from our school that lived there, mom shouted, What are you boys doing here? We ran, and I don't know why. We just didn't like her son, and her tone was accusatory. As we ran, we bumped into another kid. Don't go that way, he said, as his voice trailed off as he ran further and further away from us down the opposite end of the alleyway. We shrugged and continued on. It got darker with the trees and foliage, but we soon emerged from the alley, and that's when we saw the lone boy. A boy aged 10 to 12 stood there. His eyes were empty. He had a vacant look on his face, while well, the half of his face we could see well enough. Above his mouth was covered with a veil, somewhat like a Halloween mask of some description. Except it was June. Halloween was months away. As we got closer, we noticed that the boy had a kitchen knife in his hand. I mean, a fully real stainless steel kitchen knife. Both hands on the handle. The sunlight made the blade glisten. We cracked a joke. Cooking outside? But he looked at us blankly. No emotion. Nothing. We were too freaked out to move. And that's when we realized he hadn't moved either. Not a muscle. We saw him blink, but physically, the knife hadn't raised up or pointed at us. Just held it closely to his chest, blade pointing outwards. We figured we should get away because instincts told us this was weird and a bit freaky. Going back down the alley didn't seem like a safe option. Being stuck in the alleyway with a strange kid with a knife didn't seem smart. In front of us was a road on a steep hill. It was our best bet. We walked up to the top of the hill, keeping an eye on the kid. The top of this hill was about three minutes from my house in terms of distance. At last, we felt safe. As we looked back down the hill, the lone kid had put the knife by his leg, now holding it with one hand, but remained in the same exact spot and stared right back at us, expressionless. We told our parents what happened and they called the local community enforcement team to scout the area. Apparently this kid was found with a knife, but we never heard why he was out there or what he was doing. 23 years after this happened, it's still on my mind. My name is Slade. I was born and raised in Arizona. This literally just happened to me, so I decided to bring it here to all of you wonderful people this evening. I'm a huge stoner and don't drive. I decided to take a bus a few miles away to the dispensary. This was about 8.30 p.m. I wanted to get a new indica cart. Purple Punch is my new favorite by far. I got it, walked back towards the bus stop to go back home. As I walked to the bench, I noticed a guy sitting there. I didn't think much of it. I'm antisocial, so I always go into any social setting, ready to be absolutely silent. However, I didn't get the chance this time, because as I'm sitting there, he starts asking me something, but I had my headphones on, so I couldn't quite hear what he said. I took my headphones off and asked, what was that? And he responds, do you want to get your hair cut? While staring at me, very wide eyes, not blinking. If I'm a betting man, I'd say that he was on something. I definitely wasn't expecting that question, so I awkwardly said, uh, nah, I'm alright. I then realized he was wearing an Arizona Cardinals jersey, and I just so happened to be an Arizona Cardinals fan. So since my entire socializing ability revolves around sports, 
I decided to ask, are you an Arizona Cardinals fan? He then looks at me funny for a split second. No, I just got this a few minutes ago, he says. I then asked, ah, so how long have you been cutting hair? Without blinking, he answered, just picked it up a few months ago. Who taught you to cut hair? I asked, even more sketched out at this point. His eyes shifted, and then he says, I learned on my own. Come on, man, let me touch you up in the back. Mind you, he was consistently pushing to cut my hair throughout this conversation. I even told him, like, yo, I don't have cash on me right now, indicating that I couldn't even pay for the services if I wanted it. But he just answers with, that's no problem. I got my clippers in my bag. Come on. So, I decided to just be real with this guy. Listen, I'm real sorry. I just don't feel comfortable getting haircuts from people I don't know. And like at night and shit, you feel me? This dude never changed facial expressions the entire interaction. He finally goes, True that. And continues to glare into my soul. I decided in that moment, it was time for me to get the fuck out of there. Luckily, this bus was right in front of our local Circle K, so I just walked in there for a few minutes, just to kill time, because, unfortunately, the bus wasn't showing up for another 17 minutes. I didn't want to stay long because I didn't want the employees to think that I was stealing their shit. Granted, I had a pretty good reason to go inside at the time. So I waited about 6 or 7 minutes, and literally as I'm walking out, there I see the haircut guy walking in, still staring at me. Luckily, I walked past him, and I fucking noped it out of there to the bus stop down the street. Bus finally got there. I saw the dude at the back of the bus, but he didn't bother me anymore, and I made sure to keep my eyes to the complete opposite of his direction the entire time. I tend to overthink most social situations I'm in, even if they're extremely quick. But... How would you have handled this situation? Would you have let this guy cut your hair? Am I weird for acting the way I did? I'm a 20 year old female. I went grocery shopping at Walmart earlier today. And as I was outside waiting for the bus, a strange old man, 50s to 60s, approached me. It caught me off guard as I was looking at the road where the bus would come from. Hi, would you like a ride home? No, that's alright. I'm just waiting for the bus. It should be here any minute now. Are you sure? I give people rides home all the time. No, really, I'm good. My friend is waiting for me at the bus stop to help me carry the groceries home. Then the man walked back towards the parking lot, and I called my friend to explain what just happened, and how it was weird and creepy from the age difference, and the fact that I was in a dress. As I'm on the phone, I look over and notice him sitting on a rock or something in the parking lot, seemingly waiting for someone else to come that needs a ride. The whole situation really fell off and weird. I was driving home from house sitting in another city. It takes me about six hours to do this drive on my motorcycle because I have to pull over regularly to massage the feeling back into my butt and stretch my legs. I left around 11 a.m. and missed the weather alert with thunderstorm warnings along my route. This road takes me through the mountain passes with a lot of hairpin turns. Normal speed is 80 kilometers per hour, and a couple of these turns have posted speeds going as low as 30 kilometers per hour. It's hailing and pouring rain, full on thunderstorm weather. I'm doing my best to keep to the speed limit while also being safe and there's nowhere to pull over and wait it out and not that many passing lanes. On the last hairpin turn, I slow down and then take it at the posted speed. A huge truck that has been behind me for about 15 minutes pulls into oncoming lane illegally and speeds up next to me, laying on the horn. It's a blind corner. He sees oncoming traffic coming at him. Instead of doing the smart thing and slowing down to get back behind me, he decides to gun it. If I hadn't downshifted when I realized what he was going to do, he would have nailed me with his 30-foot trailer he was dragging behind him, sending me flying off the cliff next to us. The next town is about 20 minutes away. 
I pulled to the gas station to dry out a little bit and calm down. After what just happened, I watched him drive away. After two hours, I pull into a fruit stand and grab a snack and take a break. This is three towns further down the highway. Lo and behold, he sees me on my motorcycle and pulls in to have a go at me, yells at me, and tells me he had to teach me a lesson for slowing down on the highway. When I asked him what he would have done if he would have killed me, he told me it would have been my fault and he would have a laugh as I went over the cliff. So yeah, guy who tried to run me off a cliff, let's not meet again. When I was 15, I had a crush on a girl from a different city who unfortunately had their house burned down by a meth addict neighbor. She called me immediately to let me know what just happened and I told her I was going to go as soon as I could. I really meant it because after I got off the phone, I changed my clothes and snuck out of the house. I think it was already 3 or 4 in the morning and I have no means of going to the bus stop unless I walk. The bus stop is pretty far from where I live. So I was switching between running and walking. If I get tired, I'll sit down for a couple minutes on the cold pavement before running and walking again. While resting under one of the light posts, at the other side of the road, I saw someone riding a motorcycle at a very slow pace. I can also hear music from the motorcycle. I guess they saw me sitting there because they turned and drove towards my direction. I did not think it was strange. I kept sitting there until the motorcycle stopped in front of me. On their motorcycle was a dude, maybe in his 30s, skinny, bald, and pale. Tied to his neck was a rope attached to a small radio player. It was playing music, but at a very low tone. What are you doing? He asked. Me, having absolutely no sense of stranger danger, told him, I'm going to the bus stop. You won't catch the bus if you don't walk. I noticed that the guy was very giggly. It's like every time he talks... He found it funny. I told him it was okay, I can walk very fast. But it's dark, he told me. If you want, I can give you a ride, he says with a very wide smile. Since I'm very stupid, I just wanted to get to my friend as soon as I could. With sparkle in my eyes, I said, sure. I hopped on the motorcycle and we began cruising the streets. While riding, I noticed he made sudden short breaks to cause me to move closer to his back. When I pulled myself away, he'd make those types of breaks again. A couple minutes on the ride, I realized he went the wrong way. I told him he missed the correct turn, but he was not responding. He turned the volume up on his radio higher and drove faster instead. That's when I thought this guy was going to do something horrible to me. I'd rather break a kneecap than being killed by this dude. I jumped off the moving motorcycle like Evil Knievel. I landed on my feet but lost my balance and fell on my bum. I couldn't stand because my knees were shaking so much and I had gashes in my palms. The dude shouted, You motherfucker! as his motorcycle wiggles, almost crashing. I thought to myself, If this guy turns around, I'm absolutely going to die tonight. Thankfully, he kept driving. Even limping, I managed to walk towards the bus stop. I still went to visit the girl to make sure she was okay. I also had my first kiss that day. I needed advice on what to do in this rather strange situation. Last night after a party, a guy who was a friend of a friend offered to drop me off at home. I was hesitant and wanted to book an Uber, but he insisted on driving me home. The problem was... I was feeling quite drunk and out of sorts. When we got to the parking lot, he sat in the car with me, turned off the lights, and said he wanted to wait for a few minutes since he was feeling a little too high. I got scared and said I would go out and wait, but he convinced me not to and even discouraged me from booking an Uber. Things took a weird turn when he started driving in the wrong direction, assuming I was too intoxicated to notice, but I wasn't and I asked him to take the correct turns. He kept taking detours and turning off the GPS, but I managed to use my own phone to navigate and get us back on track. During the ride, he started praising me excessively, talking about how other girls in his life weren't good, 
but I was different. He seemed to be pushing me to something more, even though I had a long-distance boyfriend. It made me uncomfortable, and I insisted he take me straight home. After reaching home, I realized he left his ID in my bag. Now, I want to return it to him, but given the weird behaviors during this ride, I'm not sure how to do it safely. I don't want to meet him alone again. Our common friend has moved out to another state. Has anyone been in a similar situation or have any advice on how I can safely return his ID card without putting myself in an uncomfortable or risky position? Update. Thank you so much. Super grateful for all the comments. I understand how some of you said there's no need to agree with him on dropping you off problem is this happened to me the first time and I didn't have to be assertive till now. I hadn't been put in that situation before so I didn't really know how to deal with it. I just went with it like I'm dealing with a simple friend. I know this is not the time to be innocent and I should have known better but I take it as a lesson for life. About the ID, I did drop it off at a friend's place and asked him to take it from there. He seemed to have realized but wants to not talk about it. He asked me to hang out again. I mentioned that he got a little too drunk that night. I told him the location of his ID and blocked him. However, I don't want to be a part of any drama, so I was not super rude as I initially thought I would be. I politely told him that this made me feel uncomfortable and I don't want to be friends anymore, then blocked him. A few years ago, I worked in a busy but dangerous area of Rio de Janeiro. There are just too many streets where local criminals can ambush pedestrians, mug them, and effectively run into hiding. One day, I worked until 7 p.m. and my fiancé picked me up. The streets were already deserted, so we decided to find a safe spot to call an Uber. We quickly found two men watching the entrance of the store. One of them was a doorman in uniform, while the other one was wearing regular clothes and speaking into a walkie-talkie. So far, just regular Rio stuff. The second guy and I had small talk about how dangerous the area was, after which we all went silent. The Uber was taking some time, so he eventually asked if I was sure it was coming. I checked and confirmed. He decided to explain his curiosity well, today will be especially dangerous. We want to do something about these low lives. As a cop, I find it distasteful. I immediately hid the shiver that came down my spine. Vigilante death squads are a big deal in Brazil. And a word to the wise is enough. I took a deep breath and played dumb, to be sure. Are you a civilian or a military cop? He smirked and answered, Today I'm neither. After a very long minute, the driver arrived. We said goodbye and left. On the following day, I saw almost no homeless people in the area. I knew why they didn't want to be there. Nothing ever appeared on the news. Edit, I see this post may have lacked some context. Massacres like this are reported in Rio pretty much on a weekly basis. Trust me, every Brazilian I tell the story to agrees massacres must have taken place. When I was around 10, I ran away from home. My ex-stepfather and his wife took me away in the mountains to hide me. Everything was fine until my stepdad's friend came to our camp. I'm not sure why my stepdad and his wife left, but they did, leaving me alone with his friend. All during my life I had been warned that this guy liked his girls young and not to be alone with him. Yet here I was, miles from help with this older dude getting creepier and creepier in his comments and actions. I waited for him to step out and take a leak, and I grabbed the horse that I had been assigned and went to hide in the woods. I got far enough away where I couldn't be seen and hunkered down to wait for the safe adults to come back. I could see the guy hunting around for me, but he couldn't see me. It was dark and luckily my horse stayed quiet. I don't know for certain what the guy wanted, but I'm really glad my instincts led me into the woods and away from him.
Last summer, I took two of my kids and two of my younger daughter's friends to a renaissance fair. As we were leaving, the girls, 15, 15, and 16, were walking ahead of us when I see a man approach them and appear to ask them to take their picture. He had camera equipment, so my first thought was that he was with a fair, taking pictures to be sold. When I got closer to them, I realized that he didn't have an employee shirt on or any indication of who he was. I stopped him from taking the picture and politely asked why he was taking a picture of my girls. Just one was mine, but he didn't need to know that. He had the gall to say, well, first of all, because I said I could, and turned his back to me. Wrong thing to do. I stepped in front of him and said, absolutely not. You're not taking pictures of them. The girls were confused, and the dude tried to motion to them to step to the side. I raised my voice to make a scene and said, You're not taking photos of my girls. He asked which one of them was mine. I glared at him with my best teacher glare and said, All of them. He shook his head and started to walk off, then turned to hand them a business card and said to call him. I grabbed them out of his hand and told him to leave. He stormed off. The card had perforations on the edges and looked like he had just made them at home. They advertised him as a modeling agent with a number. The kids wanted to know why I was so mean to him. They also assured me that he was with a fair. After I explained that if he was legit, he would have looked for a parent rather than avoiding one and explained what kind of modeling he may have had in mind, I could see it click with them and they were completely creeped out. The audacity of that dude. Tonight, I was walking to the corner store to get some chips and soda. Halfway there, I realized it was closed, so I turned around to go home. I noticed the car drive past me. No big deal. Cars pass by on the street all the time. But then the car turned behind me to go down a street. Then I went on my way. Just a few minutes ago, I see the same car by my neighbor's house next door. I duck and walk towards my house and that person revved up his car and sped off. Was I about to get kidnapped or worse? Recently, I've been getting more into cosplay and going to conventions. I've been making all my own clothes for a while now but only recently decided to really start getting into cosplay. I've been to a handful of conventions over the year, and this is the first bad experience I've had. Anyway, for the convention, I wore a Supergirl cosplay. I made and patterned it myself, and overall was pretty happy with how it came out. A handful of people asked me for pictures, and generally I said yes. Well, later on this convention, my friends left but I was going to meet up with some other friends later that night. I took a break from walking around and sat in one of the hallways where there was a small seating area. Someone walked up to me and asked me for a picture. I said sure and stood up to pose. He then said, entirely unprompted, thank you for being one of the few cosplayers that actually have the physique to pull that cosplay off. I said, excuse me, and decided I no longer wanted to take a picture with him. So while he rambled, I tried to backpedal. I picked up my bag and just started walking away. He then proceeded to grab me and physically tried to block me from leaving. I shoved him off, shouted, Don't touch me, and walked away. He was shouting after me. I wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. I just told him not to touch me again and walked off. I didn't get a chance to report him since I just wanted to get away as quickly as possible. But about 15 minutes later, I was on my way to meet my other friends that I mentioned previously and I saw him again. Of course, I immediately beelined for the nearest staff member so I could report him. I look over my shoulder and he was doing an ominous stare, very much giving me, I think I'm an edgy anime protagonist vibes. I explain what happened to the staff member and the guy starts walking towards me. When I finish telling the story, he stands about five feet away from me and starts saying, What I meant is most cosplayers are overweight. And I cut him off and walked away because my friends were waiting for me. 
Like, dude, I know what you meant the first time. That's why I thought you were an asshole. And his first reaction was to try to defend himself again and not profusely apologize for grabbing me when I was trying to get away from him. Anyway, later that night, I followed up with con ops. They told me that they talked to him and they put him on the watch list and said, I'm not saying this as an excuse, but he explained that he's autistic and didn't actually mean any harm. I said the harm was still done and he made me feel incredibly unsafe. And the con ops person said she would work on getting him banned from the weekend, but not the convention as a whole. I only went to the convention on Friday since I worked on Saturday and Sunday, so I'm not sure if anything happened after that. Hello, this is Bad Vibes. Today's video is on a touchy subject that may trigger you. It has to do with family members, and a lot of them are uncle stories, if you know what I mean. So, if that's something that will trigger you, please just watch a different video of mine. And everyone else, sit back, relax, and enjoy. My dad and I were never close. I wasn't close to anyone from his side of the family, but his two younger brothers set off every internal alarm I had. Uncle One turned out to be molesting his stepdaughter, who he raised since she was an infant. Uncle Two, who this post is about, I'll call him D. I have several siblings, and we have many cousins living in our small town. They all think D is the best, lots of fun to be around. I never warmed up to him. I didn't trust him, and he had a creepy vibe. I kept my distance and my mom never made me hug or have physical contact with anyone that I was leery of. D lived next door to my grandma and seemed to be always down with some kind of illness. I was staying with my grandma for the day and she was making food for D because he was sick. She fixes him a plate and tells me to take it over. I'm not happy about it but I know better than to disobey so I take the food next door. I walk in the door and he yells out and says to bring it back there. I walk into his bedroom and set the plate next to his wardrobe by the foot of his bed. D says he can't reach it there and to put it on the nightstand next to his bed. I take it and set it on the nightstand and D grabs my wrist. I panic and pull away, trying to get loose from him. He's pulling me towards him and I brace my foot against the nightstand and resist while saying let me go. He says, I just want to talk to you. And I just say, let me go. He finally lets me go. I bolted out of the house and said nothing to my grandma. Later that evening, I tell my cousin and she said I'm stupid and doesn't know why I'm the only kid that doesn't like him and he just wanted to talk to me. That I should feel terrible about thinking that he was trying to pull me into his bed. What a terrible thing to say. I didn't mention this to anyone else and began to question if I was wrong and reacted badly. I felt guilty for a long time but still stayed away from him. As I have gotten older and looking back, I think my reaction was correct. What adult tries to get a kid to warm up to them by grabbing them and pulling them towards their bed? What adult continues to do this when they can see the child is terrified? You get a child to warm up to you by terrifying them? No, adults with good intention don't do these things. We were obedient children. If he would have said, wait, I want to talk to you, I would have obeyed. D passed several years ago and there were rumors about inappropriate behavior with young girls, but nothing more than rumors. I still believe I read the situation right. I honestly don't know where to begin or deal with this entire situation. To keep it short, I've been touched in my sleep by him for four times now, and throughout them all, my mother hasn't really done anything about it but yell at him through text. She sent me a screenshot, but that was it. It's a little infuriating since he would manipulate her into thinking that he was just putting a blanket over me. To which I reply, who the hell is he to put one on me? And you're just gonna ignore the fact that he went into my room 
He also guilt-tripped her, saying, We can't do much if that's what she thinks, because you know I'm not the one to do that. Let her be. Just pretend to be mad at me when she comes home. My mom acted poorly. It was too obvious. Mind you, I've gone through past situations with family members, grandfather and cousin. I can't exactly leave home since I'm honestly not prepared to live alone yet, and I'm still saving up. No matter how much I barricade my room, he'd get inside. I had to hide and change my toothbrush because it was always used. I had to wear a bra even when I went to sleep. I'm seriously reaching my limit. I woke up to the sound of a kiss close to me. I thought to myself, my mom was at home because she was at work by 6am. I continued to pretend to be sleeping and I heard him whisper, I love you close to my face. I've never been so creeped out to the point that I trembled. The next day, my mother was away again. I bought so many locks, and yet he was still able to get in. I woke up, continued to pretend to be sleeping, and jolted my eyes open to see him sitting there watching my face up close. He scrambled to the door. That's when I knew I had to do something, and I'm not safe anymore. I sleep with a weapon on me every night now. I never told my mom about these recent behaviors because I know she won't believe me sadly or do anything serious about it. So if it ever happens again, I'm going to have to muster up all my courage to stand up for myself and confront him. I'm a 23 year old female. I have a cousin, 27 male who was adopted into the family when he was 12. My uncle and aunt already had four kids, all of them in their 20s and 30s, so I'm not sure why both of them, in their early 60s, wanted to adopt a 12-year-old. I never had a problem with this cousin growing up, as he and I were the youngest grandkids, so we bonded a lot. I didn't see him often, We're living three hours away from my grandparents, then my aunt and uncle living about an hour away. Over the years, I started noticing pretty odd behavior, like messing with dead birds, and just sudden mood changes when talking to him. Then one day, years later, my dad got a call from my grandmother, and she was freaking out. Apparently, my cousin got arrested, and with it being a small town, it was all over the paper. My cousin was arrested for peeping in underage girls' restrooms, planning cameras in locker rooms, bathrooms, CP, and assaulting a minor. I was only 13 at the time, so I had no understanding about what that meant. He was charged as an adult and served only a little bit at a time. After all of this, I never referred to him as my cousin. In the following year after that, I was in a room alone at my grandparents, and he came in and cornered me and tried to hug me before I left and repeatedly told him that he was not supposed to be alone with me since I was a minor. I screamed when he wouldn't stop, and luckily, my dad found us. Once I was older, my dad told me something that was deeply disturbing. Before he was put into the foster system as a child, he was repeatedly raped by his own mother. My uncle revealed to my father that they put him in therapy. One day, the therapist asked him, If you were to meet your mom again, what would you do? He said, I would rape her like she used to do to me but I would kill her first. Needless to say, I am not in contact with that cousin anymore. This happened when I was 17 and still in my senior year of high school. This is not as creepy as some stories on here, but I wanted to share my experience. My boyfriend at the time texted me saying he had been hanging out at his friend's house who lived pretty close to me. He asked me if I wanted to hang out with him for a bit, so I agreed. He picked me up around 8 p.m. and drove the couple miles away from my house to a mobile home park. He parked in front of a pretty large-sized mobile home. I felt uneasy because this mobile home park wasn't in the safest neighborhood. This place itself looked a little run down, just like the rest of the homes here. We entered through the right side door, up the small stairs, in a carport. 
Directly in front of you, when you first walk in, there's a kitchen and dining room. If you look towards the left, there's a living room that's located in the front of the home. If you look towards the right, there were doors to the bedrooms and bathroom. This was probably the biggest mobile home I've ever been in. It was a little messy, and the sinks were full of dishes, kitchen table piled up with junk, beer bottles everywhere. The living room had a coffee table full of weed, pipes, bongs, pill bottles. Just a bit of backstory, my boyfriend at the time had a bit of a drug problem that later on became worse. Before you judge me, I wasn't aware of the severity at the time. I think he occasionally partied and had experimented, which is sadly really common in the town I grew up in. Little did I know, he was doing a lot more than I knew behind my back. So this problem he had led me to meeting a lot of his friends who also were into the same stuff. I was introduced to his friend who was sitting on the living room couch. I don't remember his name, but we'll just call him Jake. Jake seemed friendly. He was about our age. I learned quickly that he lived with his aunt and uncle, who I was also introduced to. His aunt wasn't social at all. She was in the kitchen, then left to the bedroom and closed the door. There is something strange about Jake's uncle. Something seemed off to me. But he was overly friendly to me, so I brushed it off. He was probably in his 50s, thin, kind of tall like 5'10", and had blondish gray hair that was receding. Jake's uncle started packing a bowl for everyone. He sprinkled a white substance on top. I sat down on the couch while they all passed the pipe around. I declined. Weed was still illegal at this time, and I've never been a social smoker. I remember his uncle asking me why I wasn't smoking. I really forget how this part was brought up, but Jake's uncle overheard my boyfriend and I talking about cats. He looked over at me and said, Oh, you like cats? Want to see mine? Being the cat lover I am, I got excited. Ah, oh, you got a cat? He was like, yeah, you want to see her? Now I assumed that he was going to bring her out. So I said, sure. He got up and led me down the hall, motioning me to follow him. Come on, this way. I looked at my boyfriend puzzled and asked if he wanted to come with me, but he didn't feel like getting up. I really didn't want to come off as being rude if I didn't follow. So I got up and followed him down the hall to the very last door located at the end of the hallway. He opened the door for me, and I walked into the bedroom. I noticed a shotgun next to the bed, leaning against the wall. I got the vibe that this was possibly Jake's uncle's room. Jake seemed too young to own a gun, and this room didn't look like his style. It looked like a guest bedroom, or a room for someone older. I wonder why his aunt went inside the other room. I'm not sure what's going on in their personal life. Maybe they slept in separate beds. It could have definitely been a possibility... Anyway, right next to the bed was a beautiful white long hair cat on her scratching post inside the room. I went over to say hi and pet her. Jake's uncle walked in and I heard the door close quietly behind him, almost as if he wanted to be discreet that he was closing it. I jumped up and looked over at the door and then at him. He must have noticed how scared I looked because he said, this is so the cat won't get out. He came and kneeled down next to me and started petting the cat. My gut feeling told me that something wasn't right. I felt sick to my stomach. I went backwards towards the door and he yelled, No, the cat's going to get out. But I didn't care. I just ignored him. That's when I realized that it was actually locked and not just closed. I unlocked it and swung it open. The cat did indeed run out, so he wasn't making that up. Regardless, I just met this man, so why would he lock a 17-year-old girl alone with him in a room? Why couldn't he ask my boyfriend to come with us, too? The room was located at the far end, opposite side of the living room, where no one could really hear us. I went back to the living room so fast and asked my boyfriend if he could take me home, which I would never do, considering he wasn't sober, but I was desperate. He was hesitant, but I asked, Right now? I lied to him and said that my dad wanted me home right now, pretending to look at a text on my phone. 
when we were back in my car, I was so relieved to be out of there. I started telling my boyfriend how Jake's uncle closed us in the room together and I felt really uncomfortable. He told me that I was overthinking the situation and that the uncle was a good person, so I thought maybe I was overthinking it, but it never changed how uncomfortable I felt about it. Please always trust your gut feelings regardless of what anyone else has to say about it. I never saw Jake or his uncle again. I never wanted to go back there. Over 10 years later, I still get creeped out when I think about it. When I was about 7 or 8, my three cousins, Chris, male, 8, Kate, female, 11, and Jen, female, 6, got a stepdad. Everyone was super excited because, because my aunt had been a single mom for years and her job at the 7-Eleven across the street from her low-income apartment complex wasn't quite cutting it. Uncle T, their new stepdad, was cool, well-liked, and made good money. He moved in with them and I would go over every now and again, spending a week or two at a time. Uncle T was hardly there because he worked so much, but when he was, he gave me really bad vibes. I had grown up in an abusive household and had and still have pretty good creep dar. And while Uncle T did nothing out of the ordinary, I always felt sick around him and didn't make much eye contact with him. Maybe not creepy, but he used to come behind me when I sat on the couch watching TV and put his tongue on my nose, which I thought was gross at the time, but not necessarily weird because I wasn't sure of what the boundaries for an adult and child interaction should be for that young of age. And not having an uncle before, I thought it might be normal uncle stuff. But looking back at it, I maybe spoke one sentence to him before the interaction and now realize how weird and inappropriate it was. Even though I got a creepy vibe, I was always jealous of my two cousins because Uncle T was always spoiling them and their friends. Taking them to the mall, buying them things, taking them to the movies, giving them cash, etc. But I never seemed to stick around at my cousin's place long enough to partake in this. Knowing what I know now, I'm glad I wasn't lucky enough to receive any of the gifts from that disgusting man. After about a year of my aunt being married to Uncle T, my cousin Kate confided in one of my brothers, her age, that Uncle T was abusing her and Jen. Kate said that he would make her give him BJs and would make her invite her friends to sleep over. Kate was instructed to make her friends go into his room and do sexual things to them, telling them that he would kill them or their families if they told. My six-year-old cousin Jen recounted being raped, saying... I thought I was going to die. It eventually came out that he was also sexually abusing two of his biological sons and was put away for a long time. I'm glad that they got out of that situation. But what makes me sad is the fact that my aunt remarried another man that would hack Jen's phone, making it to where all her messages she got or sent went to his phone as well. He would pretend to be guys she knew at school and would sext her with these guys getting pictures of her and everything when she was 14. When my aunt found out, he said it was to protect her and it was dismissed. My poor cousins have endured so much real trauma from these creeps and their lives reflect that trauma. This isn't too creepy, but it creeps me the fuck out. I'm a 21-year-old female and my uncle is much older than me early 40s. He's the youngest out of my dad's siblings. He saw me from birth up till I was nine. He was okay with me as a kid and never did anything creepy to me as far as I could remember. However, when my parents were together, my mother always warned me not to get too close to my uncle. When I was nine, I moved away with my mother to a completely different city up north and she told me things about him and my grandfather. It made me feel gross hearing them. However, I can't lie, I did doubt her, as she had the tendency to exaggerate every story she told. Little did I know how right she was. When I became 18, my dad's family and I met up in the city at that time. It was great. I saw my cousin, who was a year older than me, 
and we all caught up on what I missed. I interacted with my uncle again too, and was friendly with him, just like everyone else in my family. Though I regret it now because he saw my fun side, and I guess that motivated him to interact with me. He looked much older, and grew a large gut, and became almost bald. It had surprised me because he looked like your average TikTok star when he was younger. That meeting was okay, however he began acting strangely with me afterwards. He'd always managed to find a way to touch me, such as putting his finger under my neck or chin to turn my face suddenly towards him, like a cheesy rom-con or something. It was not in the private area, but he was always touchy. This for me was a yellow flag, as our culture is strict, and men don't touch women at all, even in a friendly manner. None of my other male relatives have behaved like this in the past, except for my grandfather. So he made me feel weird, and I had forgotten all of what my mother had told me about them. One time, a particular incident occurred when I was at my cousin's house, and he was there too. My memory is hazy, but I remember he whispered a question about why I'm so shy, and he was so close to my neck when he said it. I could feel his hot breath on my neck, which made me have cold sweat. He wouldn't leave me alone and kept asking me questions, forcing me to interact. Another thing in my culture is women are told to be hospitable and will not cause a scene as it's extremely shameful and the woman would be blamed even for legitimate reasons. He would always do childish expressions at me whenever I would accidentally make eye contact with him and I noticed he was always staring right at me. The conversations he had would try to include me in some way and he would always ask me questions about it though I tried to make myself look busy. I think once after he breathed on me, I caught him looking through my purse when I was away from it and he noticed and quickly tried to act like he was doing nothing suspicious. Near the end of the day, I was on the sofa looking behind it while petting my cousin's cat. My uncle was leaving and wanted to say goodbye. I didn't think much of it as he usually would say goodbye. However, he grabbed me by my wrist and pulled me towards him. It felt pretty violating as I was practically cornered due to the positioning of the sofa. He said some things that I can't remember as it was overpowered by my feelings of disgust that I had towards him and panic. What he was doing to me was not allowed in our culture. Men did not grab women by the wrist, not even husbands were their wives. I tried pulling back but he grabbed me harder and it felt like he was filling my wrist even more. It freaked me out, and afterwards he let me go and left. I turned around and saw that my dad had partially seen the ordeal. When I got home, I told him everything that was happening. My dad said good thing that I came to him, and that he would talk to my grandmother about it, so she could straighten him up. However, sadly nothing like that happened. My dad instead always kept a distance between me and my uncle. He wouldn't let my uncle into my house if he knew I was in tops that weren't completely modest and told me not to open the door to him if I was home alone or just with my brother. My uncle was still creepy sometimes. He was recording a video of my little cousin's birthday like everyone else, but he spent some uncomfortable amount of time just filming me and I was obviously uncomfortable. My dad did call me towards him and kept me under watch while my uncle was near. Once, my uncle had come over and knocked like a wild man for us to open the door so he could deliver us some food our grandmother had made. It was late and did the same thing to our cousins. My dad has told him that we wouldn't open the door for him if we were home alone, but my uncle wasn't happy with that. The weird thing is he just had a baby. Mysteriously, his wife has never met us or interacted with us, our grandmother had made. I also don't know why he chases after me specifically. He doesn't act like this to my other cousin, and I'm not a looker. I wish I had listened to my mother from the get-go, and just steered clear from him since day one of meeting him. I really hope someday I can get away from him. I think he's really creepy. I sadly don't think he will ever get what he deserves, due to my misogynistic culture.